The time is 5 p.m. Uh, welcome to the Deerfield Select Board, Board of Health and Sewer Commissioners meeting for December 14th, 2022. This is a hybrid meeting, a Zoom, and a meeting here at the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2002, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order, suspending certain provisions in the open meeting law, Mass General Law Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2023. Please note that while a uh, option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public. The meeting or hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcasts unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. Uh, for purposes of in-person attendance, a town will host the meeting at the, in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. The remote participation can be found on our Town of Deerfield website. And by the calendar, you'll see a, a link for this meeting for the Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioners meeting. There's a toll-free number if you'd like to call in. It's 833-548-0276. The meeting ID is 911-604-1580. And the passcode is 570012. On that um, link, you'll see an agenda. And that agenda has a link to a Zoom meeting. So if you want to attend by Zoom, you can click on that as well. Meeting attendees should mute their phones. Um, if they're on landlines, you hit star six to mute and unmute, unless asking questions or commenting. All attendees should wait to speak until other participants are finished. Um, we're beginning this evening with a, a hearing. And um, I'll call the meeting to order. And then I'll also read a oh. notice of public hearing. Town of Deerfield Select Board Notice of Public Hearing, pursuant to General Law Chapter 140, Section 157, the Deerfield Select Board will hold a hearing on December 14th, 2022 at 5 p.m. at the request of Ashley Young to determine whether a dog owned by Alicia Kaiser of 357 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass., may be a nuisance or dangerous dog. This hearing will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room, Deerfield Municipal Offices, 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. The remote participation is the same information I just read to open the meeting, but the toll-free number is 833-548-0276. The link is the same. The meeting ID is the same at 911-604-1580, and the passcode is the same at 570012. So I'll call the hearing to order. Um, so we have uh, we, we have the matter of a dog hearing pursuant to general law, chapter 140, section 157, regarding the dog owned by Alicia Kaiser. Um, I've read the notice um, on, on November 28th, 2022. Notice of this hearing was sent pursuant to uh, the provisions of general law, chapter 140, section 157, to determine whether a dog owned by Alicia Kaiser of uh, 357 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass., is a dangerous dog or a nuisance dog as defined by General Law Chapter 140, Section 136A. If the board finds that the dog is dangerous, it will also determine what measures it shall take to protect the public from your dog in, in accordance with General Law Chapter 140, Section 157C. Alternatively, if the board finds that your dog is a nuisance, it may order you to take remedial action or ameliorate the cause of the nuisance behavior pursuant to general law chapter 140 section 157 B. Um, the subject uh, to be discussed at the hearing will include but not limited to the following one an alleged incident where on May 21st 2022 a neighbor's dog was attacked by your dog. Um, two an alleged incident on August 1st 2022 your dog was at large and three alleged incidents where on various dates between um, 8, 22, uh, 8, 2022, August 1st, two, 2022, your dog was reported to be at large or at least on at least three other occasions. The hearing will be pursuant to the provisions of general law chapter 140, section <clears throat> 57. You may appear on behalf, uh, or with, you, with an attorney 
call and, and question witnesses and present evidence. Copies of all the reports and other records that may be discussed during the hearing have been provided to you as attachments to this notification. If additional copies are needed, please let us know. So open the hearing and I'm gonna read the documents um, into, the, into the record. Um, Let's see, prior, uh, so prior to offering any evidence, I ask that if there's anyone here who would be presenting evidence to the board to stand and raise your right hand and repeat after me. So um, anybody, Alicia for one, if you wanna stand up? And is, is Ashley Young on as oh, well? She's raising her hand right there. Oh, she is, okay, we'll start. We'll start, uh, Ashley Young, uh, state your name and swear that the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. My name is Ashley Young, and the testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank you very much. Alicia Kaiser. My name is Alicia Kaiser. The testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank you. Your name, sir? My name is Michael Boyer. The testimony I'm about to provide is the whole truth. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Billy Jordan. I'm the animal in the Thank you. Should my partner and Doc swear in? Is your partner going to be giving testimony tonight? Yes, and so isn't my daughter. Okay, then yes. Please stand and raise your right hand. State your name. I'm Ryan Bellows, and the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth. Thank you. I'm Aubrey Young, and the testimony I'm about to give is the whole truth. Thank you very much. My name is Jesse Craig, and the statements I will give are the truth as well. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Uh, so the hearing is open. First, the following records are, to, are being admitted into the records. Um, and this may take a while. So I really, my job tonight is to um, decide what evidence needs to come in um, to this hearing what is pertinent to the issues that we're talking about. There's a lot of data that's been given. Um, not all of it is actually re relevant to this specific item. So it's probably gonna take a little bit of time to kind of do that and read this into the record. So um, bear with me while I sort that out. So I have a list um, of the hearing documents. I think probably everyone's been provided them. There are 12 pages of them. And I think I'm gonna to look to our attorney as well to figure out which which I need to read in and which I don't. Um, so I've got the stack here. So we'll, you wanna maybe- Yeah, I, I have a list. Let's, you do um, as well? Okay. Let's, I, I have a list, but not, not the- Yeah, so maybe do you wanna yeah. come over and maybe pull up a chair and that. we can go through that and see what's what. Can you get by there? You let me pull to the thing. So yeah. I don't want to desert. <laughs> right. So I have police, uh, uh, quite a few police documents, reports, mm -hmm. and I think we should just go through each one and see what's needed here, because um, not all of them are related to the incident we're talking about here okay um let me go grab the board yep and i don't see in this first in this first item i don't see any relation to the dog or any of the dogs, domestic arguments, slamming doors. Um, yeah. I, 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 again, if, there, yep. if, there's, if there's nothing to do with the dogs, and more specifically yep. the incidences of those um, dates, right? Sorry, in those dates right here. Um, right. And, and, you know, it, 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 especially um, the, the attack on the other dog. I mean, Correct. That, that, that's, that's really, really that's really, that's really find the, out. the crux of this. Uh, that's Perfect. really what's going to determine whether or not this you know, yep. dog is dangerous or anything. Okay. Um, 
Here's Officer Smith's report as oh. well as the veterinary information. Okay. I would set this aside. I would admit that. This Here's whole thing. We're at as we go and I'll discontinue this on the side for now. Yeah. We'll start with this. This is a this is that a report is official of, police report of all of this. Yes. Oh, okay, that's easier. Thank you. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so you know, you know, let, let's let, let's re, 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 read into the record this police this report. Whole police report. Yeah. Um, and then we'll pull from this if we need more. This is the police report mm -hmm. summarize you um, all, 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 all these incidences. Yep. Which will be incorporated into this police report by reference. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So yep. we'll, we'll 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 admit this, understanding that. All the supporting documentation you have right here is perfectly incorporated by reference. That works. That works. It's easy. All the references to earlier emails were in that one as well. Okay, so, great. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, Deerfield Police Report, Mayor uh, from Patrolman Marissa Smith, uh, reference 22DRF 1560F, entered um, August 14th, 2022, modified August 15th, 2022. As a result, you, you, so you, don't you don't have to read. Don't, just, oh, just the header. Just Perfect. the header. Okay. Just, 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 just tell us what it is. Yep. Read the document. Um, and this is the the narrative uh, on all of this documents, and it looks like all the issues from. Let me just pull this from. From August tenth, twenty twenty two. Let me roll back to. May 23rd, August 12th. Yeah, May 21st. Okay, so this has the issues. Do you want me to read any of this highlighted stuff? No. No, we, we've got the we, document. We, we can get into that after we hear the testimony. Perfect. And the board can take their time to review these. Yep, good. And, and, and once you review them, look at them and consider that and the testimony given to you. Today. Okay. After you've taken as much time as you need, you can, you, you can then... Perfect. Vote we'll, we'll on that, whether it's going to be dangerous or use and stuff. Okay, great. So, do we want to hear from? Um, so, if, yeah, if, any other? So, if do, if this all the documents we have here, are what we're relying on. Yes. Um, just read that in the record, and let's let's begin. Um, uh, in, if you if you like. Um, yes. Miss um, Young, and you you can go from there. And um, maybe I'll just stay set. And I guess I'll also read into into the record the supplemental narrative from Patrol Patrolman Marissa Smith, um, RF two two DRF dash one five six O F entered eight twenty eight twenty twenty two and modified ten four twenty twenty two. That we'll have both of those available too. Of course, please do. <laughs> Super happy to have your help. Thank uh, you. Great. Okay, Ashley Young, would you like to present your evidence and, and case? Sure. Um, so I know that the primary date at hand is the day that my dog was attacked and injured, um, but I would like to just reference a few of the things that happened prior to that because it speaks to the nature of the other dog and the history between the two dogs and you know, explain why I did not report those things. Um, I first started moving my property into this apartment on October 28th of 2021. During that time, their dog was off Loki. The downstairs neighbor's dog was outside running around unsupervised while we were attempting to move stuff in, which made it difficult to carry stuff into the apartment and leave the driveway. I provided you guys with a copy of a text message that I sent to Miss Kayser telling her that I was struggling to leave the driveway because Loki was outside and trying to follow me out into five and 10. She did not respond for four hours and said that she would then take the dog inside. I was already gone and off the property at that time. Um, on October 30th, which was the first official day that we were moving in, Michael Boyer was helping us move in and our friend Tony Caluso was also helping us move in. Um, when we were finally done later that evening around 8 p.m., it was dark outside. Tony went to take Zeus for a walk. We always keep Zeus on a harness and a leash, a leash not for the safety of other people, but just because that's what we feel we should do as responsible dog owners. Um, Ashley, that, Ashley, just, and, and as you speak, just slow a little bit too, so we can document all that as well. Oh, so I, you know, we'll, we've got plenty of time. Okay. Um, I'm also very nervous. So right. I- Take time. Try not, I know it's, no, I know it's nerve wracking, but truly take your time. We're here to hear, hear from you. Okay. Um, so 
uh, at that time, Tony was walking our dog. My partner, Ryan Bellows and Michael Boyer were having a cigarette. Our porches run parallel to each other and they were all kind of standing in that area. And Tony was out more in the yard walking the dog. When Alicia stepped outside to join them to have a cigarette, their dog Loki escaped. And that is the first time that he attacked our dog. I was inside at the time but I did hear the end of the scuffle and I ran down my stairs into the hallway. And at that time I saw Tony and Ryan running inside. They both looked like they were in distress and they were you know, trying to pull Zeus inside who was also visibly in distress. Ryan was really upset because Zeus is technically Ryan's dog. Um, and he was explaining to me that it just took them five minutes to get Loki off of Zeus. Um, he got tangled in Zeus's leash. He had escaped when Alicia opened the door and that it took four grown adults to remove him. Um, at that time, I honestly wanted to do something, but it was our first day here. And I knew the history of Alicia Kayser, Michael Blair, and the previous owners of the property. They were friendly with each other. Michael Boyer was employed by them. And I really wasn't trying to ruffle any feathers. And I figured there is no injury at this point in time. So maybe it's just like a territorial thing and hopefully we can get past this. Um, at that time, Ryan went back outside and spoke with Michael and Alicia. They apologized and said that, you know, they'd make sure this didn't happen again. And in the future, we should work towards introducing them so that, you know, we can prevent this from happening, which I would have been fine with doing. We just never really got around to it. Very busy schedules. And fast forward to November 28th of 2021, I went to take Zeus outside for his walk. Um, during this time of living here, I always had to navigate because Loki was allowed to roam freely and unsupervised. So I would often have to check, make sure I didn't see him anywhere before I would take Zeus outside because I was obviously scared of another attack happening. Um, on November 28th, I waited until I saw Alicia take him inside and I went outside with Zeus and Alicia must have seen us out there and thought maybe it was a good time to introduce the dogs. She came outside with Loki on a leash, which was appreciated, but I explained to her, I really wasn't in the mood to deal with an introduction that day. I had to get back inside. And I was honestly nervous because of the attack that had happened a month earlier. Um, she didn't really listen to me and kept approaching, came much closer. They got close enough to sniff each other out. And within an instant of sniffing each other, Loki was trying to bite Zeus. Zeus was, Zeus tends to go into this position in a defensive position and put his head down to protect his neck. Um, thankfully, because they were both leashed, we were able to separate them fairly quickly. Um, I ran inside. I was really, really triggered and very upset by the situation. And about an hour later, I received a message from Ms. Kayser, which I provided a copy of to you guys, where she apologized, um, basically stating that Loki had gotten out of her control and just kind of came over to Zeus and she did the best she could. I was trying to be reasonable and again, not wanting to ruffle feathers with my downstairs neighbors or the landlords. So we just said, all right, you know, that's fine. We'll move past this and hopefully it doesn't happen again. Um, around that same time, my communication with Ms. Kayser was starting to dissolve because I was constantly getting messages about my dog barking, my children running, music, the shower. Um, basically our morning routine was too disruptive to them. And she would constantly make threats that she was gonna call the cops or call the landlord to have us evicted. I also provided you guys with a message where she said that don't forget we are the property managers and we can stop being considerate. Um, so with all that factors weighing against me, I've never really mm -hmm. felt safe to ask for help. Yeah, I know. Um, so I never really felt safe asking for help or telling anybody what was going on with the dog situation. And at that time, again, there were no injuries. So I just felt, you know, we can navigate this, move past it. I can work around it. Um, then pretty much for the winter, there was no incidents. We didn't really talk at all. We didn't see each other. And then February vacation came and my partner and I had allowed my daughter to babysit my younger son. We had gone grocery shopping when we returned um, our dog is so well behaved that we can leave our exterior door and our interior door open and we can carry stuff in and out and he will just stay upstairs and stay put where he belongs. Um, at that time we had gotten home, my partner and I opened the exterior door, which leads to a hallway. We opened the interior door, which leads to our stairwell up into our kitchen. And we were carrying the groceries in. We were on, I think our third trip going inside and Alicia opened the door to have a cigarette, at which time Loki bust past her, bust past me and my partner going up the stairs into the hallway. And he went up the stairs into my apartment. Um, when he started to push past us, 
we, you know, kind of in an instant responded. We both dropped our groceries, ran up the stairs after Loki. By the time the two of us made it into my kitchen, Loki was already attacking Zeus. My two children were screaming. They were very terrified, obviously. Um, we started to yell and scream Loki's name and try to get him off the dog. At that time, I was able to remove Zeus from the kitchen by his collar and dragged him into my son's bedroom, which is adjacent to our kitchen. My kids and I ran in there and shut the door and my partner was yelling at Loki and forcibly you know, getting him to go down the stairs. He had to continue to push and yell at the dog all the way down to the bottom hallway. At that time, Alicia was standing there and basically took over and dragged Loki out of the hallway. Yeah. Um, and that was what date was that you said? That was during February vacation. I don't have an exact okay. date February vacation of this year. Um, and then, again, can, and then the date, the date of incident here, is that is that what you're leading to next May 21st? Yes, that's the next incident. Um, so that that incident happened during February vacation. We've never talked about it. She never sent any apology. Um, but again, my daughter who was here will testify as will my partner. Um, and then on May 21st was the next incident. Our communication had kind of come back around. Our, our kids spent a lot of time together. Um, we were outside more because the weather was warming up. That particular day, my family and I had spent the day at the lake. We were gone all day, but Zeus was home. We got home and when we got home, um, Mr. Boyer, Ms. Kayser, their two children, Junior and their toddler, a friend of theirs and the, the friend's toddler were all out. Um, it was Junior's birthday, it was the end of his party and they had asked if my son Jalen could stay outside and play with Junior for the rest of the party. We said, yeah, that's fine. Um, I then went inside to go get Zeus to be able to take him outside for a walk. I had to wait for a few minutes because when we had pulled in, Loki was already outside. Um, at that time, the downstairs neighbors had brought Loki in because he was being very playful and just the, the friend that was there, their toddler kept getting knocked over. He wasn't being vicious, but obviously they were concerned with it. So they put Loki inside, which was my chance to then bring Zeus out. Um, I came outside. We have a very large side yard. If you've ever driven by the house on five and 10 and I was in that side yard, but I was not facing the house. My back was to the house. I was facing the field next to us. Um, junior and my son, junior is the downstairs neighbor's son, junior and my son, Jalen were over petting Zeus. And then they said something about wanting to go inside to play on the tablets. And I continued to walk Zeus towards that field. Um, they walked the opposite direction and within like 30 seconds, maybe, I all of a sudden heard someone yell, Loki, no. I heard someone else yell, Loki, and I heard someone yell, watch out to me. I turned around. At that time, Zeus came with me. So he was in front of me standing there. Loki came and immediately, like, there was no sniffing. There was nothing. He immediately went for my dog's neck. Um, he did get the side of his ear on the left and when that happened, Zeus got very like protective of me and pushed his rear end to me, which kind of sent me flying backwards. At that time, my left leg went up and Loki disconnected his grip from Zeus's left ear. My left leg went into Loki's mouth. Um, his teeth scraped down my leg, which you guys have the photo of. I'm obviously grateful it was just a scrape and I know he wasn't intentionally biting me, but I still was injured. Um, so this, my leg got scraped, went to the side, at that point, Zeus basically sat on top of me and put his head down as he's done the past times that Loki was attacking him. Loki caught full grip in between his ears and for five minutes, I was stuck under my dog watching Alicia Kayser punch her dog in the mouth and the teeth in an attempt to have him break loose, which obviously I'm grateful for. Um, and then Mr. Boyer was holding Loki who has like a, just a regular collar. Um, he was holding him by that collar, standing behind him. So he was trying to pull him off. At the same time, he, Loki is not fixed. Um, so he was kicking him in the testicles. Um, neither attempt on their parts was getting the dog. He was not phased. I was sitting front and center and that goal was to take part. He was not phased. He did not respond to being punched in the mouth. Alicia's hand was cut while she was punching him in the teeth. Um, he was not responding to being kicked in the te testicles or pulled up by a fairly decent sized man. You guys can see Michael's size. Um, 
and there was just nothing. And I was attempting to scream at the dog, hoping that would scare him and make him let go. It didn't do anything. They were screaming, no response. Um, my dog stayed cowered down the entire time, did absolutely nothing to defend himself other than stay in that protective stance. Um, and it took at least five minutes of that before my partner and my daughter had been inside. They were showering from after the lake. They finally heard the screaming. Um, at that time, I heard my partner out in the driveway, so he must have came outside. I heard him yelling. When he yelled, I also heard a horn from five and 10, someone was laying on their horn. And it seems like the combination of the distractive noises and new noises that Loki hadn't been hearing, I don't know what happened, but by the grace of God, he finally let go enough that while I was pulling, we broke loose and we were running from the side yard to my door. And even though Michael had his hands on the collar, Loki was able to break free and basically chase us to the door. And after that, they got their dog inside. My partner remained outside, was very visibly upset, obviously was discussing the situation with them. You know, it was a heated argument. Um, at that time, they blamed my son Jalen and said that he opened the door. Um, but again, I heard him and Junior ask permission and they were going into Junior's home together. Um, and this isn't the first time that Loki escaped and attacked when someone is opening the door. Um, so, you know, it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who opened the door, whether it's a five-year-old or an adult, the, the point is the and dog that, is- that, That's the end of that incident, you went inside. That's I was it. at that point, yes. Um, and then I received a message later on, or I'm sorry, I reached out to Ms. Kayser first to apologize, no, not to apologize, just to ask, are you okay? Because I had seen her hand get cut um, during the incident. She responded to me, which I provided you guys proof of, a response that, her hand got cut because she was trying to punch Loki in the head and make him let go. And she hoped Zeus was okay. At that time, Zeus's only visible sign of injuries were the small cuts on his ears and a huge lump on his head. I am not familiar with dog injuries. Um, and my dog is also a husky with a very thick undercoat. So I didn't understand that that lump was something much more severe. I thought it was just a lump. And I was grateful at that point that that's all it was. And again, my wounds were just scratches and could have been much worse. So I'm, again, trying to look at the bright side of things and be the bigger person, be cordial here. Next, that night, we finally all calmed down. I'm, we were all very traumatized. I mean, my kids were very shook up. They had to sleep in the bedroom with me that night. It was a mess. Um, we all finally went to bed around 1030. And then in the middle of the night, I wake up to what I thought was just licking my face because it felt warm and wet. I go into the bathroom and the whole side of my face and my hands are covered in my dog's blood. Um, he's dripping blood down his head. And then I'm able to see that the lump had actually risen and opened up. Um, and he was just bleeding. At that point in time, I started to panic because uh, we had just told our vet that we really didn't want to go back there anymore, given to some issues we had. So we're sitting here with an injured dog with no vet. And I know how expensive the vet is, but I contacted them. They tell me they need $200 even to just view the injury and tell us if it's severe and what they can do. We had no money. We just fixed the car two days earlier. So I start asking anyone I can to help me. I was I able gotta, to. I got to zero this in a little bit and try and stay focused on on okay. like specific so, facts. That um, the vet tells us that you know obviously it could have been worse. Um, our dog did the right thing with the stance that he took. That's a protective stance, and they said that's common of shepherds and huskies to know to do when they're being attacked. Um, and it's good that he didn't get attacked in the neck, but. Um, the reason it took so long to bleed through is because of how thick his undercoat was and mm -hmm. you know, that it was definitely a tooth puncture wound. It basically what the wound resembled to them was a, a tooth in the scalp. Um, so they recommended a course of treatment that we obviously couldn't afford. Um, they recommended stitches, some medications, some things that we could not afford, but they were able to loan us an e-collar to keep the wound safe. Um, and basically the vet recommended that we do not allow these dogs near each other at this point in time because okay. it. That sounds good. I, I've got um, a clear understanding on the 21st. Um, oh. Do you want to speak to August 1st? I do. Um, well, actually, I just want to touch real quick on June 8th. Um, June that... 8th is not in my list right now. So I've got May 1st, May 21st, August 1st. Okay. I. I... 
I had sent evidence and given the evidence during the investigation and I've sent it to everybody more than once. So, and I sent it again today to the assistant because I explained to him, I'm not sure how all this oh, stuff. Excuse me. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I, it should have been June 8th. Oh, okay. Go ahead to June. I'll be as quick as possible. I'm sorry. So June 8th, Alex White and Robert Waldron were here to do the Board of Health inspection. I had brought my dog out to meet them because if you walk into the hospital, I'm sorry. Um, so if you just walk into the home, he will hug you and that can be intimidating to people. So I wanted to be outside with him to meet Robert and Alex before the inspection. Um, at the time that I was standing there introducing Zeus to Robert and Alex, Mr. Boyer opened his door for a cigarette. He watching him, I could see he purposely moved to the side to allow Loki to come out and down the stairs, then proceeded to light his cigarette and say, oh, don't worry, they'll be fine. Thankfully, Loki didn't rush up. I'm not sure if he was intimidated by Zeus's e-collar or what, but he came up slowly. They started to sniff each other. Zeus stepped back, growled. Obviously, he still got a gaping wound on his head. And then all of a sudden, Mr. Boyer grabs Loki, looks at Mr. White and Robert and says, oh, see, look at her dog's the aggressor. That's the one you should be here to take. Mr. White looked at him and said, I'm not the animal control officer. I'm here for the board of health issues. So it just, it, it didn't seem right. Um, I contacted the police after that because Mr. White and Mr. Waldron said that they were only there for the health issues and weren't willing to. And we're not addressing board of health issues tonight. So just. No, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. I'm just saying they okay. wouldn't make about witnessing what Mr. Boyer did because they were not there in that capacity. So I felt at that time I needed to call the police department to have this documented because I still had not been contacted about the attack on the 21st by the animal control officer. So okay. I want to see a document of this issue happening only two weeks after um, because it speaks to the intent. Um, also, I provided you guys with a message from Ms. Kayser telling me that she would allow, Lo or sh she and Mr. Boyer should have allowed Loki to put in the work on my dog and that next time they won't intervene. Um, so between making that statement after the attack on the 21st and then purposely letting their dog out on June 8th, that really scared me. Um, when I called the I do understand that, Ashley, what we're trying to focus on, on is the dog a, a nuisance or dangerous. So I know that well, other people's actions uh, kind of come in and play into this as okay. well, but we're focused on the dog. So now they're back mine. They're I'm not sure if you heard me on that. Did you hear any of that? I did. Okay, great. Sorry. And sometimes with communication over, over the internet, it doesn't always work well. So I understand that. But at the end of the day, a dog is going to behave how it's allowed to behave. And if an owner is going to not intervene when a dog attacks and threatens to not intervene and then purposely allows their dog outside after its attack, that should be concerning to those who are involved in the decision making. Um, I contacted the police to have this documented. I also let the police know that I was going to be protecting myself when I take Zeus out going forward because it was recommended to me by the animal control officer of the MSPCA, not your guys' animal control officer because he was on vacation. And the police told me I would then be arrested for animal cruelty. Well, um, I think we've got all of that stuff in the record already because we, we read all of that in. So really I'm, I'm looking at the incident on August 1st. Yeah, well, um, yeah, I will get to August 1st, but also the incident in June where they had the dog tethered to the tire swing, that is an incident of neglect. Um, I understand that Sergeant Bairtek wasn't- not the, That's not the dog's behavior. So I'm, I'm looking at the dog's behavior. Okay, well, August 1st, I pulled in after being gone for the whole day. My daughter, my son, my partner, and Jesse Craig were all in the vehicle with us. <clears throat> I pulled off of five and 10 and attempted to pull in my driveway. Immediately, I had to stop because Loki came to the front of my car. Obviously, I don't want to run over an animal. So I stopped with my tail end stuck in five and 10. I sit there and I wait for Alicia, who I could see smoking a cigarette on her steps to come get her animal. She was yelling to him. It appeared, I couldn't really hear because my windows were up. I was not comfortable getting out of the car at that point. Um, and it she continued to try to yell for him. Then she left her steps, tried to come get him. When she did that, he went from the front of my car to the side of my car, was jumping and basically up at the window, I think to say hello. It wasn't in a vicious manner, but he was scratching the whole side of my car, which I provided you guys photos of. And Jesse can 
uh, testify that he witnessed that incident as well. After a few minutes, she was finally able to gain control by grabbing his collar and dragging him inside. And that was on August 1st? August 1st, yes. Right. Okay, so I think we've got a good understanding of kind of the history there and where you're coming from. Um, I guess I would I would take some testimony from um, Mrs. Kaiser as well, or Ms. Kaiser as well, and then, it, oh, go ahead, excuse me. Well, the, the police and then, okay, and then we'll, then we'll circle back. Okay, so um, let's see. Uh, so Marissa, would you wanna give a, a brief testimony on the instance that we have here, your history and what you've, you've kind of documented, and then I'll, yeah. How about a yeah, you can come right up here. There's right. a seat right here. Yep. Do you want this back? I'm yeah. Yes, Absolutely. And then I'll grab it back. Sure. You need the uh, this one as well. This is an email. No. Okay. Great. So initially, this got reported to the police department. Marissa, you'll you'll have to speak up. Yep, and, and then just state, state your name. Oh, hello. Yep. Thank I'm, you. I'm Marissa Smith. I'm a police officer at the Deerfield Police Department. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I spoke with both parties, Mrs. Young and Mrs. Kaiser, to get both sides of the story about the dog incidents, which is documented in this report. Um, I can add maybe more afterwards after she speaks if you need. Um, yeah, well, go ahead. Just, yeah, read, I guess, some of the highlighted things now, sure. right? if, or any, um, any documents that any, any things you've gleaned from the interaction between the two parties and, the, and what, how you view the dog. Okay, so I spoke with Miss Young on August 10th, and she explained to me about her dog and the incidents that she described earlier. Her dog is a husky mix, three-year-old, and she explained that um, the first incident when she was moving in, she explained the incident that happened there, and I asked her to describe the behaviors of the dogs, and she said that Loki was attacking her dog. She stated that Loki goes for the dog's throat, and that Zeus puts his head down, and then the biting happens to the top of the head, um, and that there's difficulty in separating the dogs because of the leash, um, being tangled in the leash. Mm -hmm. Basically, everything she just described okay. um, there, and then she also provided the vet documents that you have yes. as well, which you I can that. read if necessary. Um, she explained the injuries from the May 21st incident um, that he had some blood on his ear from two scratches and she did not initially see the cut on the top of his head um, and then how she reached out to the vet hospital. She described the cut as being approximately one centimeter wide and that she was provided with a cone collar uh, to keep him from hitting the wound. Um, when I spoke with Ms. Kaiser, she described um, some other events and her side of the, the events, which I'm sure she'll be testifying to. Um, I can add after if there's anything that okay. gets missed, but um, I can speak to the vet documents if you'd like as sure. well. Sure. Um, so the vet documents that were provided was an estimate of possible treatment that, um, which is in the packet. That's there. right. I see that yeah. estimate. Yep. Um, and then some conversations afterwards between the vet and Ms. Young about what happened. Um, the doctor report says that Zeus has been in scuffles with this dog before, but this is the first time that they broke skin, otherwise healthy. He's been scratching at it and making it bleed more. On presentation, he was bright, alert, and responsive from the physical exam. Um, and then... The wound care was to keep the area clean by using a warm, moist cloth and dabbing gently as needed. Okay. Uh, with an exercise restricting and a collar. Um, she followed back afterwards um, with an email that she provided saying that on Tuesday, May 24th, that Zeus has only allowed her to clean his wound twice since he was seen on Sunday and she wanted to be sure that it looked as though it was healing well, or if she should be allowing him to, the dog to clean it more often, and how long should he wear the collar for? And the Vesh responded um, that they would like to take a look at the picture of the wound and that it's not as clean as they would like and to start on an antibiotic. So that's what she provided for the vet documents here. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
Absolutely. Yeah, and and like yeah, like kind of a, a any other hearing, you can um, you can cross examine anybody that's here. So if you wanted to ask questions of of the officer at all, or anyone else who gives testimony here, okay. more than welcome to do that. I'm not going to cross-examine. I don't need to cross-examine or ask any questions or anything. Uh, is, is Ashley's uh, iPhone up in the corner? Oh, iPhone. Okay, yep. good. All right. Yep. All right, perfect. Thank you. I just want to make sure she's still here. Did, yep. Uh, did she maybe acknowledge that she's still here? Uh, um, yes. Oh, good. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it, it, yeah, just say if she'd mind just keeping that open. So we yeah. Can yeah, thank you. If you could just, yeah, I, I know you heard us, so that's great. If you could just keep it open so we know you're still in the still in the hearing. Thank you. Because it's not labeled with your name. It just says iPhone, which is fine. Okay. Yep, that's just totally fine. So thank you. Anything you'd like to uh, address to the officer at this point? Okay. No, thank you. No, thank you. Then, then maybe I, I could hear from our... Um, Animal control officer, and let, let if you want to come up and introduce yourself. Thank you, Marissa. And then just introduce yourself and 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 kind of what you do, and then um, give us your you know assessment of your involvement in the case and your assessment of the dog would be very helpful. My name is George Ukalin. I am the animal control for Deerfield, Greenfield, and Monaghan. I cover all those three towns. I responded to Ashley on one of her phone calls. I had two messages from her prior to that respond to her call. And I told Ashley when I talked to her, I will respond to the others and I will chat. Mm -hmm. Yes, prior to that, I was on vacation. Okay. When I responded to the property at 357. I met the owner of the dog, which okay. did the bite. And to the date that you did respond? That was June 13th. June 13th, okay. Okay. Go ahead. My report should be in there. Too. Okay, great. Yep. Would it help you to have the report in front of you? I know exactly what I did. Oh, <laughs> perfect. It's good enough. Let's check. Enough. <laughs> All right. Yeah, let me just give us a, a rundown there. Yep. No, I'm, please appreciate the help. Yep. I met the owner of the dog, which did the bite. I met the dog. The dog, to me, was very friendly. Didn't attack me. Was right there by the in the kitchen. We stepped outside. The dog came with me outside. Was fine. Which this, which dog was this? This is um, Alicia's uh, dog, Loki. Loki. Okay. On the same day, when I was there, I went to talk with uh, Miss Young. And she didn't came to the door. I started walking towards my van. Then she came out. Okay. And at that time, I turned back and I started talking to her. And okay. her dog was upstairs and was barking very vicious. I didn't meet the doc because I didn't go inside. Okay. They told me their side of the story and you already heard Ashley's side of the story. Yeah. To me, the dog didn't appear to be dangerous or vicious. When I told Ashley this, she got very upset. But this is what I saw. I cannot say that dog is vicious when it's not. So of course you weren't there at the at the time of the incident. No. But no, go ahead. Um, no. The uh, but from what you saw when when you were presented with a dog, that's those are your feelings and your assessments. Yes, but of course you weren't there during the. During the incidents, but um, is there um, is there anything members would like to ask 
So, you, uh, Colleen, I guess I just wanted to know if you had a chance to look. So you did not see physically see Zeus at all? No. So you didn't know the condition of the injuries? No, or... no I did not see. Oh, okay. That would... I see the pictures which Ashley sent me. Right, right. Yes. Um, I... But not physical. Right. I was just concerned. Was that already too late. Right. The time. dog was being taken care of properly. That was all. Can uh, I have questions? Uh, one second. One second. Um, did you work's going to ask you ever did any time ever meet the dog Zeus? No. Okay. Um, Ashley, do you, do you have a question for the for the animal control officer? Yeah, I have multiple. If that's okay. Yes. Okay. Um, when did you first receive a phone call or email from me? I don't remember that, but the emails can be checked. So they are there. Yes. Okay. That would be June 2nd was the first time I emailed you and the select board. When was the first time you reached out to me? On June 13th. June 13th, correct. Okay. Did you and I actually meet and speak on June 13th in person or just on the phone? On the phone. Correct. June 13th was on the phone. Correct. The date that you're referring to when you knocked on my door and I came outside yep. was, was on the 20th. June 17th, actually. The first time you called me back was June 2nd, or I my first contact to you was June 2nd. We agree on that and can be verified by email. You then waited till June 13th to contact me back. We spoke about the incident and you told me you would then be coming by to investigate thoroughly. And you would speak yeah. with the dog downstairs and that you would also come speak with me, my family who witnessed the attack. You said you would be willing to look at my dog and you would be willing to see evidence of other attacks that had not reported. How come you did not follow up with any of that? When I wait, hang on a second. So, um, so I, I guess I'm trying to figure out how this relates to the dog's behavior. Because I, I wanted to show Callan the blood stain on the ceiling of my vehicle so he could see how badly my dog was bleeding. I wanted him to see the injury on my dog and meet my dog so he could see my dog's nature. My dog is a comfort dog, so I love on people. So what, what I want Callan to come with the members of my family the way he did with downstairs. I'm sorry to interrupt. I just was trying to get an understanding. When he was there, he heard your dog barking up there and you did not come out. like. Um, that was June 13th. I was not at home. And I explained that to him when we spoke on the phone. Uh, the day he's saying I came outside was June 17th when I called him for another incident. Okay. So the 13th, you didn't see him. The 17th, you did. He finally called me back responding to the June 2nd email. Uh -huh. We on the phone. We spoke about the incident. He told me all the measures he was going to take. I explained to him, I am not home today. So let's arrange to me and you can come talk to my dog, see my dog, talk to my kids. None of that happened. I didn't even know he was on the property speaking with downstairs June 13th or meeting Loki June 13th. On June 17th, I called him again to basically say this four days ago, where are you? I still can't safely take my dog outside. He then says, okay, fine, I will be there. Then he uh, so, that's when we spoke outside. So, so we're clear that you, he has uh, seen the photos. He yes. was aware of the injuries um, and we have the report. So I think we're, we're good on all that data. Is Correct. That, okay. Uh, my question is why was he, and I'm asking him that this, has, why did he put their family and their dog and not my family and my dog when we were the victims? It's, it's not really relevant right now. So the the issue is did he get all the data you know i guess you guys well, no. missed each no. other he got the aggressor side of the story and only met the aggressive dog who i've made very clear is not aggressive to humans he is aggressive to another animal i mean honestly if he really wanted to investigate i would have been more than happy to take Zeus out on a leash with loki at the same time 
but he was never willing to speak or coordinate anything with me. He was always in communication with the aggressors and the offenders. Okay, so we've got we've got your information. Did you yeah, hang on one sec? Um, just make sure you skip over. Yeah, we want to make sure that you have some time. Yeah, you mind if I? Uh, Michael Boyer, um, how you doing? Um, so the day that you did speak with Ashley, that was the seventeenth. Yeah. Um, he wanted you to see the dog so bad. I understand this. It, I'm just um. He wanted you to see the dog so bad. I wanted to show you all the the cuts and everything like that. Um, she had said when she first started talking to you that she had called you on the 17th about another incident. That was the original, but there was no incident in between the 21st and the 17th. That was the first thing she said. But my question is, she wanted you to see the dog so bad. She wanted to see that your her dog was so friendly and, you know, not vicious at all. Why is it she didn't take that opportunity on the 17th when you came to see her, like she had asked, to show you the dog? I wasn't aware who was at my question. Yeah, please, please do. Uh, Ashley, please, hang on. Please feel free to ask any questions about the event at issue, but he something like that is purely speculative. He okay. can't know why Miss Young did what she did. Um, so if you would just refrain from any questions okay. that's speculative um, as such, and you, you want to focus it on I get the incident. Saying. Sorry about that. I, no, not um, at all, not at all. Just please. trying to pick apart the this stuff but um i do have a, a question related to you know and when i when i do my testimony we'll get to all the, the stuff that um is a big part of this it doesn't pertain exactly to the the viciousness of the dog or anything like that but it, it is relevant to this and it accounts for a lot of this um this dog hearing was there a did she call a lot i'm guessing she did or did she call a lot Call your number a lot. Leave a lot of voicemails. Um, I got voicemail from uh, yeah. Williams, and I called her friend. Constant, yeah. Um, we, I mean, we have all the reports. It's it's been a, a constant back and forth. But um, I just, I'm what I'm trying to get at is there's proof that there's a lot of untruth here. That there's, not, I'm sure you guys have read the really, report. Yeah, about false. We're just Dog talking. Fights. We're just talking about, about facts of this case. Yeah. yeah. No, absolutely. When the this is the last witness that the, the board's going to call. Yeah. Right. And then I'll get my chance. If there are any more questions you have for him regarding the incidents at issue, and it's these incidents mm -hmm. that the board is going to weigh in determining whether Loki is dangerous yeah. or a nuisance. So if you have any more questions regarding factual questions just, about those incidents, yeah. those incidences, please. But just after facts. he's done. Yeah. You, 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 Ashley, or her rep, okay. Alicia, or her representative have the floor to, to, to respond to Miss right. Young. Um, I do have um that pertains to Loki. Um, you so, said, are you, are you, are you finished yes. with? Oh, uh, no, no, I'm not. Just one, okay. no, I'm yeah, sorry, yeah. guys. And this does pertain to Loki and yep. the dog. And please, the first call you received from Ashley was June 2nd. Yes, so she had been attacked, her dog had been. Was it three times? I believe um, our dog ran up in her house and attacked her dog. She never called you then. No, no. Why would I? It seems it seems like if he did the same thing and he ran up in your house where your kids were, why? I why would why wouldn't somebody call an animal control officer? That's that's the police. That's not a question again, for him. Though. Because that's, you're a felon. That's, excuse, excuse me. Yeah. Only speak when you're when I allow speaking. I got to keep control of it. Has there been any proof aside from what the picture she showed you that my dog has ever attacked anybody, gotten off, gotten off our property and went over and attacked any other dogs? Has there been any proof of my dog? I have no I'm going to remind you the proof is before the board, the select board are the yeah. ones who can make the determination. Mm -hmm. Not him. The so, animal control I know that. officer I'm... is a witness of the select board. Yes. Okay. So him asking... all the proof that's going to be admitted was just read into the record. This yeah. big stack. Yeah. By the chair. Yeah. The other proof is the testimony of Miss Young and any other, any other witnesses she wants to speak, and then your testimony. That's the proof. Okay. So what we're just going to ask is 
whether or not you have any more factual that do not have to do with Miss Young and her phone calls to him. No yes. No yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, with the first time that you met with me at my house, do you recall me showing the bite I received from her dog? Yes. Okay. Have you ever? Um, sorry. <clears throat> Isn't it? At that time, when I know exactly what you, where do you want to go? The quarantine would have been over because 10 days were already passed. Okay. There was no oh. reason for quarantine at that time. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was what I was going to go for. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make it known because I don't, I haven't heard it mentioned that I was actually bit by Ashley's dog while I was hitting my dog, trying to get him off. So again, it's not funny. I don't. Any, you, 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 again, you're, you're going to be able to respond. Okay. Yeah. I apologize. You can give your story once the, the, the town is the, the select board is done yep. with, with their witnesses. Thank you. Um, but the important thing is that you have an opportunity to ask the witnesses. I'm all done. Anything Thank factual? You. Yeah. I'm all done too. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I, I was just getting. I'm. I'm just a little bit. A little bit confused about. I mean, Process. you guys are saying factual only to do with that, but I mean. And doesn't all that have to do with the false calls to him saying his dog attack, saying nope. that when there's not, all that stuff relates to it's in the sole discretion of the chair, I, okay. Um, as to what as, as to what he wants to, I understand you guys are trying to get it done, yeah. but I'm all set now. I'm no sorry, other questions, yeah. I'm all set. Thank you. Questions, Tim, do you have? Um, I do, I will ask, um, did you receive more than one call from um, Ashley Lee Young about this incident? Yes, and I talked to her. Okay, I'm I'm just trying to uncover. Was it one call, two calls, five calls? Is it documented in the record? Yes, they are. And you received multiple emails. Is that correct? Yes, three. And and, sure. and they're yes. in there as well. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, I'm Jesse Craig, and I actually have a question for the select board. Um, Wait, uh, it refers on. to Jesse. Hang on. So I need a camera on for one. And I just need to understand who you are and how you relate to the to either party. Um, I am a very close family friend of Ryan's, and I have known him for countless years. So uh, his girlfriend Ashley and their children are they're all like family. And um, were you there, there at, were were you at the site on any of these incidences? No, not at those incidences, except for, I believe it was the uh, August 1st when we went to Cranberry Pond that Ashley referred to. Okay. We came back from swimming and the dog was jumping on the car. We had to sit in the, the car for a few minutes until the, the owners removed their dog. Okay. Um, but that wasn't the first time that the dog was left open running in the yard. I, I've gone there on multiple occasions and it seemed there was no control. The dog was just left running, doing whatever, five and 10 is a busy road. I, I wouldn't do that. I own two dogs myself, but um, I actually had a question for, for you guys about the your witness, the uh, animal control officer and the credibility of his statements. When he first sat down to uh, We're not recount here. the events, he, Jesse, he, no. his story yes, about Jesse, he, the 17th, the 13th, the 10th, the, the, the facts of those events were twisted around until Ashley put forth Jesse, the facts of it. We're not here to talk about the performance of the animal control officer and how he does his job. We're here to talk about the, the dog and whether it's a nuisance or a, or a danger. Oh, no, I, I completely understand that. I was just asking about uh, the credibility of your witness. That that's that was my only... Good with the credibility. Thank you. It's, a, it's in the sole discretion of the chair and then the board as to who's, whose testimony they want. We're to taking everybody's information, pulling it together, and making a decision. Okay, good evening. My name is Laurie Baumgartner Drayton, and I'd like to speak, please. I, who is this? Laurie Baumgartner Drayton. I don't believe this individual is there. She's yet. another witness, but it's it. I don't know if you guys are going to actually want to hear. She was just she's a, she's familiar with my dog and his behavior and That's being fine. around another dog. She, she was not here while we were swearing people in, correct? Co I yes, I was. 
What she was, but been, I don't think you guys called on her, and I can't see her name on my screen. I, I haven't asked. I haven't asked you to be sworn in, so I'm not taking any other any other. Okay. Reason. We've got a, a full account. Trust me. It's. Thank you, Lori. Which but is this, thick, is a, we appreciate but this is a public meeting, so I can make a comment. I can't hear. Her. No, she said it's a public, public comment meeting, right so she now. can make a comment. No, there's no public comment at the moment. And it's three but I, chair, but and the chair is not recognized you. So please mute yourself. Please it. mute yourself. Look, Lori, I'm sorry. You weren't here when we support people in. I appreciate you. Coming. I was here. I was here. And I was yeah. waiting to be. She was here. Your town administrator is verifying that. She's nodding her head. Yes. I was the first people person in the meeting. If you want, let's be technical. Were you sworn in? No, it was not. Was not called sworn in and nobody right. sworn me in. Then you have then mute. Then yeah, mute. we're done uh, again. We're not. We're not having to Thank you, Lori. Sorry. It's okay. Right. I'll I'll take this further and further because you can't deny somebody to a town meeting. It's not a town meeting. It's a hearing, and I have full and control. You, you cannot hearing. deny somebody. Please, I was the first person in the yes, meeting. Please, please, please mute. Me one in. Yep. Have a great evening. I'll be seeing all of you. You're crooked. Thanks. Yes, they are. One of the two, please mute. Thank you. All right, um, Alicia. Yes. We'd like to hear your testimony. Oh, oh, we're, are we done with yes, no other sorry. questions here? Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Alicia had yes, she did. Yep. Okay. okay um, I'm just gonna recall. Pull the mic to you. Oh, sorry. Again, state your name for everybody. And I'm sorry, you got I'm gonna that. have to speak up a little bit uh, so right that we here. can hear you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, my name is Alicia Kaiser. I'm just gonna restate. Okay. Um, the incidences that she claimed happened. Focus here on that. Yep. Thank you. Um, sorry. <laughs> um, the first incident when she claims that my dog went, ran out of the house to intentionally attack her dog when he was being walked by their friend, Tony. Um, Which day was that? I think it was the 28th, she stated, when he was tied outside on a 25 foot uh, recall leash tied to the front porch. I didn't know the dog was tied to the front porch. He was not under control of a human because he was tied to the front porch. My dog ran out to smell him and he got wrapped up in the leash. And then her dog started trying to nip mine. I picked him up, his whole body physically up and removed him from the situation because he was wrapped in the leash. He was still a puppy. He wasn't even a year old. Like this is a puppy we're talking about here. Well, not a full puppy now, given obviously the time, but... I put him back in the house. I apologize. They said their dog was not injured, as the vet stated. Never once has he broken skin any of the of sorry in any of the other incidences other than May 21st. Let's just put that out there in regards to, I guess, what other people would assume is aggressive. He is not at all. He's lived there since he was nine weeks old. That's irrelevant. Sorry, back to the point. Um, second time, what I read in here, she stated that. My dog was, she was outside walking her dog and my dog chased her into the basement. And apparently I was outside with my dog, but I have no recollection of that incident. She said she saw Loki outside running and hit her dog inside the basement of the house. Loki then clawed at the outside of the door and she was very afraid. afraid. Never mentioned that to me once, ever. So I don't know about that incident, but it's on here. So I'm going to address it. The third incident, uh, how she says the dogs haven't seen each other for a while, about approximately a month. It was probably longer than that because, like I said, we were getting in disagreements because I asked her to ask her son at six in the morning, please don't stomp upstairs. Irrelevant, I know, but I was just trying to be a common courtesy and use my words like an adult. So we didn't talk for a while. Um, back to the incident, I apologize. Um, she said that Loki was running towards that or ran into the house. The... No, another time, I apologize. It was said she was in the yard with Zeus when she heard me yelling to call her dog. Loki was running towards them and barking. Loki was trying to bite Zeus's neck and Zeus put his head down and Loki bit Zeus's ears. Zeus put himself between her, Miss Young and her dog. And then I apparently was able to separate the dogs again by pulling away. Once again, never happened. I don't recall. The only time that I recall them ever meeting on a leash. Or no, it wasn't on a leash. We trained our dog since the day we got him on a training collar. 
beep buzz shock. He knows not to go out of the yard. We, our landlords also own the middle field. So that is, that was our previous landlord's property. So every time she said that our dog is at large running in the field, our landlords own that. That's not someone else's property. <laughs> I'm just going to put that out there. I apologize again. Um, that never, but this incident, the third incident never happened. Which was um, the date? It says... The one in February? It says the part after the dogs have not seen each other again, so I assume yes, February. No, it's February vacation. I, I know she didn't have a date, That's, but I, I yeah. just want to zero in on which you're yeah. talking about. Um, when realistically, the next time they had encountered themselves after being wrapped in the leash was... I had just got Loki a new uh, training collar. He was outside. I didn't see her outside because she was like half in the bushes. I try to, I look outside and I check and I try to make sure she's not out there before I let my dog out. Cause that's what common courtesy, you know, if I know you're out there with your dog, I'm not going to let my dog out. So he ran over to Zeus. I ran after him, you know, like, oh, you're going to be a good boy. You're going to say hi, trying to reassure them both because dogs react out of your energy. If you're anxious, they're anxious. So I wanted to reassure them that they're both safe. And I had suggested previously that we let them meet, but she was not responsive, didn't want it to happen. So, okay, we're going to watch out for each other. That's what I was assuming. Apparently I was, whatever, doesn't matter, but I apologize. Um, but they didn't, in, they didn't attack each other. They didn't get in a fight, nothing. The dogs were fine. I brought mine back inside. I apologize because it was an accident. People make accidents. It's not like I was like, hey, go get their dog. They didn't even fight. Next incident, I apologize. <clears throat> even though that was technically the third, but here's what was the fourth. So when she said that my dog chased her up, chase, no, okay. Third dog incident, Miss Young describes as happening mid-January. She and her family. So yeah, that wasn't January, the one I was discussing of. I apologize. Um, return, returned home from grocery shopping or we bringing food inside when the doors opened when Loki came into their apartment and ran up the steps with Miss Kaiser chasing behind her. Miss Young and Mr. Bellows dropped their groceries and also ran up the steps to see Loki biting Zeus on the head. Miss Young said that both of her children were screaming and afraid of her boyfriend was able to scare Loki out of the apartment with his deep voice while her children brought Zeus into the back room. Where did I go if I chased my dog into her apartment? I don't know. Apparently I disappeared. That never happened. And it literally, the statement proves it itself. Now I'll move that on. That doesn't have anything to do with the okay. nature of the it's dog's aggression. Here. That's, that does have everything to do with it because that was a stated incident of when my dog attacked hers. But it, it has nothing another, to do with I'm the aggression of the dog. Jesse, you cannot be speaking at this next, meeting right now. Period. The next, I apologize. Stay on. Stay on focus. Yep. Um, I just want to point out that in the email that she had continuously going from the select board to the dog officer, to housing, apparently, to the police, she also stated a different example of the same incident. I don't know if you want to reflect on it. You don't need to, but if you got free time, I would look. <laughs> I'll get back to this. I apologize. The fourth incident that she said happened on May 21st. I'm going to give you my account of what happened. And then I will go back and point out every discrepancy in her account, okay? That's what I want, just the facts. Okay, perfect. Um, May 21st, my son's birthday is May 20th. We did not have the birthday party at my house. We had it at my mother's house. My friend called me and I said that she was in town. She lived in Chicopee. She wanted to stop over. So we went back to my house. I had my nephew with me, my son, Junior, my youngest son, Elias. Then my friend had her 11-year-old and her one-and-a-half-year-old. Right before they got home, we were all outside playing with the dog, everything. But we put him up in the house because he had already been outside for like 45 minutes. He was tired. He was hot. Whatever. They got home. My son was on the trampoline with her, my friend's daughter. And <clears throat> her son. they got home, take their stuff out, went out. She brought the dog out to walk him. My dog was in the kitchen. Normally we have him crated if the kids are outside playing together because kids are kids. They open the, dro the door, they go in and out. I, I don't want an accident, obviously an accident. He was inside doing dishes. 
Okay. My son was not the one that opened the door. He was on the trampoline with his friend, with my friend's daughter. It was her son and my nephew walking to the door to try and go in my house. I don't even know why they didn't ask me if they could go in the house. The only adult that lives in that house that was outside, but kids will be kids. Okay. We're talking about a 10 year old and a five year old here. So they opened the door. Loki ran out. He thought he was coming out to play. He saw their dog, ran up to him to smell him. He went to sniff him <laughs> and their dog nipped him in the air. My dog wrapped him up. It wasn't him trying to attack him, hurt him, kill him. My kids are in the yard. He doesn't know this dog. He's met him one time on good grounds other than getting wrapped in his leash because they refused to let them meet. And a responsible dog owner would, you know, let these animals meet. They live in the same yard. They have to eventually, sometimes they're going to run into each other on accident. Just focus on like, I apologize. One step at a time. What <clears throat> so happened in the incident? My dog went to smell her dog. Her dog bit my dog in the ear. And then my dog jumped at him and had him by the head. I was trying to pull him from behind, but I was afraid that if I pulled him from behind, it would make it worse. I didn't want to cause worse injury than if there was going to be, be any to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I went to the side and I started trying to hit him. In the process, he comes outside and grabs him from behind is trying to lift him up because he actually has an experience with dogs getting like in tussles like that. I don't. I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. All I know is you gain control of your dog. I was just trying to gain control of my dog as fast as I could without her dogs, you know, making it worse because she had fell and she was still holding onto his leash. So it puts him at a disadvantage. He doesn't, he can't run away. He can't fight back if he wants to. And when I was hitting, trying hitting my dog, trying to get my dog off, her dog bit me in the hand, which was, I'm sure they were both scared, but my dog, he's lived there his whole life. All his kids are outside and here's this dog in his yard. That's trying to bite him. It doesn't make any of it okay, but dogs are dogs. Neither of the dogs are fixed. They're both unfixed males. My dog wasn't even a year old. So, and then her partner came downstairs screaming that he was going to kill my dog, ran to my dog with his fist raised in front of my children. And then Mike looked him in the face and told him, you better not because you know, accidents happen. All our kids were outside. Then her son's freaking out. She's freaking out, screaming at me about how so she got the dog separate. Yeah. How? We, Mike separated him. Okay. He grabbed him from behind and lifted him up. And then he, after her boyfriend ran outside and charged my dog with his fist in the air, saying he was going to kill him. Mike brought the dog back inside. And then we tried to have, you know, I tried to ask him if they're okay. And then she's screaming at me about the scratch she received from her own dog jumping on her when she fell. And I'm like, I got bit by your dog and I'm not freaking out on you. Well, she states that your dog. How bit could he leg. have bitten her leg if he was holding onto her dog's head? He wasn't like continuously okay. biting. So that's he was holding him there that you both because have. in his eyes, he's a threat because he tried biting separate him. Separate the dog. No, three but of us because it was me. To let go and bite and Mike and, and her laying on the ground. Sorry. Okay. I'll, I'll wait for Mike. And then so you you um we you got your dog inside. Yep. She tried also, to uh, I carried him inside. He yeah. was not on the you know, yeah. Because uh, normally he has his training collar on. And Zeus went up into their yeah. she brought her dog inside. The end of that incident. Her dog her daughter okay. and her son were outside. I was, you know, I try and tell them her son like it's it's okay it was an accident you know it wasn't intentional like you know because he felt bad because he opened the he door yeah car. which Any, anything else you want to add to this um these incidents yes i asked her that day in person how her dog was if her dog was okay she said he was fine she messaged me later asked me how my hand was um i told her it's okay things happen it's not a big deal is your dog okay she told me once again he was fine and then we woke up to messages from her boyfriend threatening my fiance that they're going to get our dog killed, that they're going to put our dog down. They're taking our dog and that we owe them money. We have to bring him. To, they have to bring him to the vet. And it's all our fault, even though her son opened the front okay. door. Just again, <laughs> I apologize, but it would just turn into like a whirlwind of downhill nonsense. Okay. Any yeah. other, any other items you want to um, for her or for me? You want to give your account? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
I was about about an to help. You want her to him to speak on your behalf? Okay. It's both of our doctors. Yeah, it's yep. um. So, uh, so this whole you guys have read it all. I'll stick to just the facts, but there's been a lot of untruth in a lot of the stories. You know, um, nobody here is um got a low IQ. I'm sure we can all figure out what's truth and what's untruth. There's a lot of facts that aren't um relevant and a lot that are, but. There's a history of false reports, lies. We have had to get a harassment order on this person. The only reason we're having we're this not, hearing, not I know, I know. Any of that stuff okay. tonight. Yeah. Issues on the dog and how the dog behaves. Okay. My, Go ahead. Yeah, please. I'm sorry. What is true? Yeah, it's in the sole discretion. Yeah, I know. You said that. The select board. They're going to take. Yeah. They're going to decide what the. Everything Ms. Young said. Yeah. Any additional documentation you two want to submit, and it is this board that is going to make the yes. determination. I, I understand that. They want to credit. Um, they're understand. the ones to make that determination. I get that. You can make it back to the no, I, that's, credit, credit. That's just credit what I'm trying to do. I'm just trying to make a statement that, you know. We appreciate your effort. Um, However, if you, if you yeah, would it? keep it to the fact. I'm sorry, guys. Oh, okay. um, there's and so if, much that it, wants it, to it, come it, out, but. If it was, if it's a different fact, if you dispute a fact, you tell us what occurred. Okay, and then you. These as, are just the credible as, as, as opposed to the as opposed to. I guess I guess uh, I I do have a question because it's some somewhat hard to follow. Um, could you just reiterate what you're disputing? What events you were disputing? We're um because we have we have the June. All yeah. of all of them except for the the May twenty first. Other um, than the dog getting wrapped yeah, in the leash, other than, no injury. Her vet said so it was herself. Our dog never ran up into their house. Um, I, I, this, our dog never, it seems like every attack she's said, our dog's gone through his first throat. Where Why? The injuries? I, there's no proof of anything other than the first dog fight. And that I thought was just, you know, their child left our dog out. He went out, he started smelling the dog. Like a normal dog does, he's still a puppy at this point. Their dog took a bite at him, being protective. Okay, being a dog. Their dog is not on the lease. Their dog was not supposed to be on the lease. wasn't even supposed to be there. Their dog. Um, we tried doing the right thing as um animal owners and um having the dogs meet because we know our dog's not vicious. We had no problem letting him out the door to meet Officer Gallen, who's. I'm sure this isn't his first week on the job. He's been doing this a very long time. He okay. met the dog. She refused to let her dog meet Callan. He has been to our house numerous times. She has been there. There's no reason she couldn't have let her dog meet him. She refused to let him meet him. That was that was the real cause of it. I understand the emails and the pictures and everything. Um, but my dog is not vicious. He's a puppy. He's never been at large. He's never gone and attacked the neighbor's dogs or anything like that. There's two dogs next door. He's the met labs. numerous times in the middle field because he um their labs come over and play in the field. And you know, sometimes we manage to let him out at the same time, not on purpose, but um never, never been any either. issue. Never we went to Florida for a week. We left him with my aunt's dog. We've never met him. There's never been any proof of a dog attack. If you, if your dog had been attacked and somebody ran up in your house, or a dog that you think is vicious or you know is vicious ran up in your house and tried going for your throat, your dog's throat with your kids right there while you're outside, why wouldn't you report it? Why wouldn't you call animal control? That to me is the biggest well, we, scare in my life. What if we they went for my kids? Her, why she? I understand. She did. I it just doesn't really. I know. Matter. I just. I just. I just need clarification I'm that sorry. you are just in fact disputing yes. all the instances. Yes. But except the one for the dog fight yes. on May. Yes. yes. Okay. Yep. My dog, yes, he was my dog did bite her dog in the head. Absolutely. I'm not denying that. Never was it away. was it him coming out with teeth showing to attack her dog? Absolutely not. There was no There's aggression at all. Effect. He was happy. Dog my dog is the happiest dog in the world. I, I should have brought him. I should have. Because okay. I, I no, you know, but I, fine. I know, I just, we just, we just need to make sure that yeah. we have facts. Yeah, but okay. other than that, I think I'm, I think I'm all done speaking. There's, you guys have everything you need to know. All the paperwork's here that you guys have already read. My dog is a sweet dog. He's always been on a training collar. Um, 
he knows every command. He's a very friendly dog. It don't matter if you're yep. a stranger or not. He will meet you and and hug and and love you. There will be no sign of aggression. We have proof uh, on our phone. I should have printed him out, but we have proof he's not food aggressive. He's not person aggressive. You have the dog officer for three counties saying he's not aggressive, and I know it's up to you guys to make that decision. My my dog shouldn't uh, shouldn't be the one on trial here, and I understand it's not a trial, but. The reason why I am on trial is because, or the reason why my dog is, is because she's the one that called and all these false reports and everything she's saying about my dog is, you know, and we're having this hearing because do you, yeah, do you have done. any other Thank documents you. that you want to um, give us? I don't know if it necessarily does it have to only be no, yes, or yeah. After. No, they have all this, babe. We have all that. Okay. Yeah. I'm I assume. Yeah. We'll double you... we'll check it. But yeah. um do you, and then can you just describe your dog for us? Size, color, age. He's um he's a lab dog. I mean he's he's a fully grown lab. Um it's hard to say. He's I think he's what 60 pounds, 65 yeah, we maybe. Princess. We drove to Salem, Massachusetts. Um the girl that had him actually got him at three months because his mom was hit by a car. Mm -hmm. So she bottle fed him up until he could eat hard food, but then her um landlord didn't want her to keep him because he, I guess, ended up being That's a bigger story. Doesn't matter, about. babe. In color, of color, oh, he's like a golden color. Yeah, he's like, he, yeah. So he's a lab mixed with um, I believe it's Australian Shepherd. Yeah. Yeah, Australian Shepherd, and we're not sure about Husky, but kind of okay. looks like it. But um, he's just the um, one. he has his shots. We brought him to the vet. He has his shots. Um. He's played the, the the reason why you let him play outside or used to you no know, longer do we leash him because we're not trying to cause we just we abide by the law there's no leash law in Deerfield but lately we haven't been keeping him on a leash but he used to go outside and play with both our sons any um any questions from the board here for no I mean I know you I, I know I just wanted to clarify that the all the instances were in dispute except the actual reported dog bite. Yeah. Maybe just give Miss Young an opportunity to describe what her dog looks like. Yeah, it's, please. Been, it's been in the video. But yes, just so correct. We do have an idea of it. You know. I, well, before I describe him, am I able to ask them questions the way I was able to ask? No. No? No. Okay. Figures. All right. Um, so Zeus is a shepherd husky mix. He's referred to as a shepsky. Um, he is, I think now he's hit 75 pounds. Um, unfortunately, since the incident, he's been dealing with some health issues. So he's been fluctuating between 65 and 75 pounds, but at his healthiest, he's 75 pounds. Um, he is like, I mean, you guys saw him on the video on my lap, I think. I don't know if you did or didn't, but he's a golden dog. Honestly, him and Loki look pretty much identical, um, except for the... Looks the difference in eye colors. How old is Zeus? He is now three and three months. Okay. Thank you. He and I, I he is a certified emotional support animal. Um, my family, we all struggle with mental disabilities. Um, we were able to get him certified through our doctor, but when we got him, the lady that raised him, she typically raises comfort dogs that go with police, but he was kind of the runt of the litter and was not able to do that. So he just kind of became our own personal comfort dog. Okay, thank you. Yep. Can I read a statement from gone? her statement if she's finished in regards to where she got her dog and if he's actually an <laughs> ESA dog? It's irrelevant. Uh, if it's not relevant, that's fine. I apologize. You can enter it in the record if you will. Yeah, you can enter it in the record. Okay. If unless we have it already. If, if it's yeah, for statements, then we have it. Yeah, you do have it. Um, I just got it on real quick. Okay. No other. She's, she's just looking for. It. She just had it, but. Oh. Jesus. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, okay. This is a statement from Miss Young. She described her dog Zeus as an ESA emotional support dog who is mild mannered. She stated that he has not been to formal training. However, when she was she is at home, he's struggling. He tug on her and apply pressure to her when she senses anxiety. 
She reported that Zeus had the emotional support training before she got him from a woman in Winchester. All right. So she states she got him from a woman in Winchester and that she was trained by the lady before stating previously that he has not been to any formal training. And she said she got him in New Hampshire. However, she is still not in contact with the breeder. She continued to explain that her partner had adopted Zeus about two years ago when he was a year old. So did you get him from a breeder or was he adopted? We're not asking questions here. Okay. I'm just pointing the discrepancies out. I, I never said a breeder. It's a yeah, woman it's who a raises comfort dogs. Go back and forth, okay. go back go back and forth please. Says, I just read exactly your words. Okay. Um, well, but that's in the report. We have that. Yeah. So we're good. Well, I just want to, one last thing I'm going to say. Um, how she stated he's an ESA dog. Owner assumes 100% responsibility for the training, safety, cleanliness, health, conduct, and AMO at all times. Miss Young described her dog as socialized through attending puppy daycare. If he is an That's ESA not training. dog, I'm not done. If he is an ESA dog, wouldn't he be trained to not be reactive That's if he was actually one? Yeah. We're done. Yeah. 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 Okay. Nope. Thank we you. Heard enough to close this. Right. Anybody else? I uh, like we're done, nothing from the board here? I was going to get to the point that. No. Okay. Are my partner and daughter going to be able to testify to their witnessing the incident on the 21st? Well, we have enough information. I don't think we, I don't think the incident on in May is, is, is in question. Yeah, so I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. I think we're, we're good. Actually. I think we've got a pretty good picture on what, yeah. you know, what took place. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with that if you guys. And just say, can we stay there? That you guys have all the messages and proof of them apologizing for every attack. They just, have it. Just say it. I, just I think I think we're good. Thank you, Ashley. We have, my we partner have... just wants to make sure you guys have copies of the apologies from, um, every, incident. from every incident and the message where Alicia admits that she was punching her own dog in the mouth. We we do. We have okay. that. We all have right. Documents here, and I, and I know I've seen them in, in emails. So okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, uh, hearing all of that testimony, I will uh, entertain a motion to close the hearing. I will make that motion. And I'll further, second it. Any further discussion? He's gonna close the hearing. All those in favor? Kim Hill, she aye. Kim, aye. Carolyn, that's on. Okay. So next, um, my question is, mm -hmm. Do, how much time do we have to kind of go through this, or do we need to take a vote immediately? No, no, we have no time to do this. Okay. You, you, you all discuss. We close the hearing. We have right. the record before you, the testimony. Yeah. Um, and now, the, the three of you, please. Okay. okay. Do you mind if we step outside? No. Of course you can. Oh. Yeah, yeah. You got You're yeah. dismissed for sure. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, so I want to, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. We're going to decide tonight. We'll take yeah. some time and okay. discuss. Discuss. And uh, just remember, you. You're, you're voting whether a danger a danger truck or a nuisance dog or not at all. Can you get him a drink? Yeah, you should be there. Sorry. Thank you for your support. You have the guidelines before you definition. Um, those are the definitions you must uh, determine whether the facts um feel free to ask any questions of me and the statutes um as as to Whose testimony to credit, or as to whether or not the facts fit in either of those definitions or not. It's okay. Thank you. Let me just go over these definitions. And again, if, if you find that it's neither, you would just entertain a motion to dismiss. Yep. You said it's okay if we step outside. Of course. And we're we're finishing this all tonight, right? Yes, I'm not, okay. I just want to make sure we're not. You want to step outside? You want to walk. Thank you very much. Yep. You're done with the hearing part. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you need to figure out what you're going to eat for dinner, honey. I so, feel pretty comfortable saying that they're dangerous. It's not a dangerous dog. No. I don't meet any of the criteria. As far as I can tell. Quick. Um, right. However, 
Bicycle should be on fingers solely based on growl and writing, based on reading the bug. Does react to other animals, which it was. Um, so, okay, so some of the standards were determined based on every clear one to hear without justification of text for some reason. I, I wouldn't see it to be without justification because dogs quarrel. Um, and, and we have seen testimony that behaves in a manner that a reasonable person wouldn't believe it to be threatened. I don't, I don't see any sort of dangerous dog. I mean, I'll have to write right. that one right at the moment. Then the, um, so, so if we, we're I looking at agree. nuisance right. or I not. Think there's consensus that it's not dangerous, right? right. Okay. Well, I think, you know, one thing that would be helpful is just to state that it does appear that both parties agree that an incident took place. Yes. In, yes. And that their disagreement is on what precipitated the incident. Was it a normal dog dog interaction? One side says the, it was clearly just an attack. The other side says the dog went to meet the other dog, sniffed it, was bitten in response. Right. perhaps because it was being protective of the owner right. and um, subsequent to the being snip bitten responded by pinning the other dog down yeah. by it sounds as though the dog took its mouth and for sure physically restrained the dog and then there was an effort agree. to separate the dogs um having not witnessed it it sounds plausible that um there was a an incident between two dogs who were not very familiar with each other. Beyond that, I can't really say which, um, is, which started which. Um, and so, and I feel it's always difficult when two two dogs are in the same. Right. Like they're not related, and yet they're in the same household, not specific household, but same property. It makes it difficult for them. Um, the uh, the good things it does in nuisance. It means Oh, remedies. Can you just find the, um, I'm trying to find the definition of the, of the, of the nuisance. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, great. The nuisance dog is one minute by excessive barking and other disturbance. I guess it's been one. Some person residing in the vicinity. Excessive barking and causing damage. So this is the only definition for nuisance. Right? Threatened or attacked livestock, a domestic animal, or a person by such threat or attack is not a gross but disproportionate reaction under all circumstances. Such threat is not a gross but disproportionate reaction. So meaning he could attack, but it wasn't like I tearing off down the street and attack it to somebody kind of thing. We have a fine line between dogs and covering that with one another. I mean it's obviously not a good situation to live in. Um so can I ask counsel um if one were to find a dog, um, speaking hypothetically, not about this particular incident, mm -hmm. um, to have been involved with another dog in a, a biting incident, um, does this, our section three disproportionate reaction, so if one dog is reacting to another dog um, and it's not disproportionate, um, does that mean the dog is, is not a nuisance dog? I mean, we're talking about an incident where it doesn't seem that we heard any testimony saying that um, that uh, the Kaiser's dog attacks people, barks at people. Um, apparently, the one incident that we have agreement on is that these two dogs were involved in an interaction together that didn't end up well. Mm -hmm. So what does this say about... It, 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 it's really the right now. It, it's, it's, it's the board's call as to whether it fits one of these um, 
I, I, you guys are the finders of fact. You make that determination. I can, if you have any questions as to what these 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 terms mean, or if I could mm -hmm. clarify them in any way, I'm happy to. But as to whether any of these definitions applies to the facts as you mm -hmm. find them, th that's solely in your discretion. Um, again, your options: is it a dangerous dog? Is it a nuisance dog? Or is it neither? And if it's a dangerous dog, then you must implement one of those seven right. remedies. Um, I don't find it as one or one or seven. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. whatever you determine. Yeah. However, if you determine that it's a nuisance dog, the statute permissive, then you may institute a remedy of your own choosing, or you may not. Right. Um, and again, if you determine that it's neither, somebody makes a motion to dismiss the complaint and you all vote as to whether it was a vote as to whether or not to do so. I feel like we haven't had an issue since May 21st, right? Or Because I don't walk my dog on the property anymore. Your hearing is closed. We're de deliberating. Thank you. So the, the avenues that the owners taken, owners of both dogs have taken, have um, resulted in not another incident since May. Um, I don't, I don't feel like it's grossly disappro uh, disappropriate either reaction. Kids are out in the yards playing and yelling, probably having a good time. A lot of action. And the dog ran out. I mean, that's not disappropriate. That's disproportionate. Um, disproportionate. Yeah, do we, um, is it in the record that, um, that a, a person with more experience with dogs has made a determination. Was there a court hearing on this? I there wasn't. I don't think okay. there was a court hearing on this incident. Okay. Other uh, unrelated okay. things was, going on. Wasn't but... uh, testing my memory. I, I right. thought I read something about. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I believe that they're you know the dogs are are supposed to be you know right separated from each other. And that seems to be working at the moment because the owners right. are taking that responsibility, both owners or certainly at least one of them. Well, it seems unfortunate that although the dog officer has met one of the dogs, he hasn't met the other dog, but um, that's not something we can remedy tonight. So the dog officers testified that he doesn't see any un unusual um, aggressive tendencies in the dog that he has met. So um, I don't know. Do we know if both dogs are living at the same place now? Are they both still resident in Deerfield? Okay. Yep. Just wondered about that. Okay. I guess I would be willing to make a motion to dismiss based on the fact. I mean, there's no question an incident happened in May, but mm -hmm. um, it doesn't seem to hit, it doesn't seem to meet the nuisance definition it certainly doesn't meet the da dangerous definition um I agree from... it doesn't meet the dangerous one i do you know i i do um have some sympathy uh definitely with the situation um well I because think we it all can did. be yeah i know i'm, I'm not yeah. saying you don't yeah, yeah. I, I didn't mean it that way i just i'm, I'm trying to process you know, um, if, how if, that if dog was either, acting. If they don't meet the nuisance or the dangerous definition, we have no recourse then? But Correct. To dismiss? Yes. Correct. You can't, you can't dismiss with conditions? No. Not unless okay. you label it a nuisance, then you can put conditions on the dog. And, and again, or on the owner. Or, or with, not. with the nuisance designation, you guys have, un unlike the dangerousness designation with the nuisance designation, you can craft what remedies you want mm -hmm. as a so, board. Um, and again, I mean, I think continued separation would be a standard that we would, we would want. Determine, you know. determining if the board, that, that, would, that would be one way to go if the board would determine that it were a nuisance, that the, 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 the dog was a nuisance dog within the meaning of the statute. And that that is. But it would be both. I would want both parties to make the effort. So you, you, you can't, can't, you, you can't, Zeus is not. So am I correct that you have made a motion, Carolyn, to, to dismiss this? Yes. I'm going to second that. All right. And so now we can discuss. Yeah. So we have yeah. a motion. We have a second. Any further discussion? 
So here we go. We'll okay, so, so we can't make a condition for both dogs. No, nope. no, because okay. only so one only is here. For yeah, yeah. Only, local. only, only local, locally is the only jo dog okay. subject to the procedure. Okay. And then, um, you know, it, it, it's always hard. You don't want to wait for a, a, a serious incident for somebody to get to get hurt. But I don't see enough um, signs that this dog is vicious and coming after people i feel like it gets tangled up in the situations because they're in close Absolutely. contact right um but i don't feel like this dog would be a nuisance dog walking down the street with any other entity outside of that home right would, would it tear off after and tackle another dog or um I, we haven't seen evidence that around town or other places that this dog is that it does go after other dogs. It has bitten other dogs. It has gotten in scraps with other dogs. I haven't seen evidence to that effect. So I feel like it's definitely clustered at that location because they're both territorial dogs. I think they're both male, correct? Both non-neutered i mean and they're at that age where like they're gonna they're gonna have a territorial thing and it's not mm -hmm. so much that one is after the other i just feel like it's just not a good mix for two dogs of in that situation and you know it would be nice if somehow they they found a way to go their separate ways but we can't impose that and i, I don't think there's enough showing here that the dog is dangerous and there's not enough showing that it's a nuisance to other situations it's not a an inherent thing of this particular dog it's an inherent thing of this particular situation right and not so much the uh, fault really of the dog um but just the, the situation it finds itself in and and how the owners react to that it feels like since may or june they because of the stewardship of of the owners of both dogs, they have found a way to make it work being in this close uh, contact to, to make it, you know, I mean, it takes effort. I mean, it, having a dog is not easy. It's a lot of work and, and, and you have to protect your dog and, and your neighbors. So it's, it's a tough situation. I, so we have a second, um, any other discussion on that? Do you want to take a vote on dismissing? Um, yeah, I mean, do you have any other comments on the that? only other comment I'd make is there's been testimony that this dog interacts on a perfectly normal way with other dogs, and that wasn't disputed during the hearing. So, um, I, I definitely think that we're, you know, dismissal is the correct, correct path and encouraging both parties to keep their dogs apart. And, um, you know, that's not an official thing, but it's a logical thing. Uh, that's my opinion. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Obviously, it doesn't preclude and if anything, any issues to us in the future yeah, if it continues. Anything really new good. comes to light that would call into question this decision tonight, please share it with the police and uh, the appropriate animal control officer okay thank you you want me to share future issues with people who don't do their job i'll That's be seeing you guys in court thank you clowns and junkies oh y'all should open a circus to get out of here hey shut them off just please shut them off they're not all muted already yeah, I don't, I don't <laughs> finish that meeting and please disconnect if they can't freedom of speech still still oh your tech guy should get fired no we don't i don't oh, i'm not you're yeah. i muted him twice he unmuted himself i apologize for that yeah can you just can delete, you delete him <laughs> uh no i guess they, they can't be so that's that's fine but they they do need to control them right can kick somebody out of a meeting Okay, so moving on. Uh, uh, thank you very much for coming. Yeah, I appreciate your help thank you. tonight. Thank you. So appearances. Um, Chris. Well, 
yes, we have, we'll skip over that first one. We have a six o'clock. Oh, we're, we're good with you, right? Just Dismissed. Wanted to check. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so, so much. much. Appreciate really appreciate it. your help and guidance. Oh, yeah, right. Can you stay oh. for the rest of the meeting and guide us? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, who, who very, very fine job. Yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, no, again, I hope. Uh, no, no, I appreciate the guidance. Yep, we try to do the right thing, and I know people are never happy with it. But, you know, the important thing is following the statute. So. Yes. My pleasure. My pleasure. Always. Just let us know. Yeah. Oh, we really appreciate it. I wanted thank to get Marissa's. Have you called us anymore? Yes, happy yeah, holidays. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Nice to see you in person. Yes, yes, likewise. So, um, is this the American planning? Yes. And yes. All right. So, uh, this next item here for appearances is American Planning Association Resiliency and Sustainability Award. Chris, I'm sorry. It was Chris Curtis. A little bit. Yeah, late. appreciate you your patience. Well, as a town resident, I want to just say how much I appreciate you guys and the hard you. issues that you have to deal with. Appreciate that very much. Not easy. Yeah. So, um, just want to report on on this item. Uh, the town of Deerfield, along with um, regenerative design and conservation work, uh, works received the 2022 Sustainability and Resiliency Award from the American Planning Association for our um, Healthy Soils um, Initiative and Report. So that was pretty exciting. Yes. Um, I traveled to New Bedford um, last week to accept the award on behalf of the town and um, my organization and was joined by um, Eric Giordano from Regenerative Design. And uh, it was a nice event at the uh, New, New Bedford uh, Whaling Museum. Um, this project, um, as you may know, was funded under MVP or the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Grants. And um, healthy soils are a really important um, and key element um, in sequestering carbon to limit climate change and to reduce the impacts of climate change as well. So Deerfield's been kind of a leader um, statewide in both MVP and in healthy soils. Thanks to your uh, help and guidance, I might add. And, and, and all of yours as well. Um, so we've, uh, you know, we've done this demo project and I, I wanna just maybe take a couple minutes and, and talk about the project itself and just briefly. Um, the, the healthy soils, project achieves kind of twin goals. One is to coordinate our efforts locally with the state's um, Healthy Soils Action Plan. Um, and that helps us in turn to position the town um, when state funding becomes available for um, additional work and projects. And it also um, mitigates the cost to taxpayers of, of climate change. Some of our biggest threats in Deerfield are flooding and drought and mm -hmm. um, Protecting healthy soils really helps to mitigate both of those kinds of threats. So the, the report, just to briefly summarize what's, what's in it, um, it's a kind of original and innovative approach that led to the award. Um, regenerative design did some mapping and evaluation of soils townwide. And the, um, the point of this was to identify where the most important soils in town are um, the ones that do this job of, of sequestering carbon and, and providing for um, flood control and so forth. Um, and those areas in town that they ended up mapping and identifying were um, basically wetlands, um, river corridors, upland forests, and farmlands. Those are some of our really important areas in town to try to, to manage and protect. Um, the report also developed some um, kind of cutting edge strategies um, and model bylaws for protecting um, and managing those soils, keeping them intact. Um, thirdly, um, the project engaged students. We had um, over 100 frontier high school students that participated in a um, soil health field day where they went out to um, various sites around the high school, including um, neighboring farm to um, take samples of soils and, and understand better how soils function and, and protect um, our community, essentially. That's hugely important. I just, that's great work. I mean, yeah. It really is to get people in touch with how it all works and uh, how the farms work and how the soil makes all the difference and how it's 
wonderful our soil is in this area. We're very lucky. We're the top five percent in the world. It's amazing. Yeah. I mean, people don't really think about that. Right. And and before Chris explains too much, goes beyond the students. I I just want to say thank you to the Galinsky Farm oh, and the Yeswinski Farm. Um, it, it was you know there's low, this is a low budget obviously sure. project. So um, it was lovely. The students, as Chris said, it was over 100 students went across to the Galinsky farm to be able to do this hands on soil um, mm. research. And, you know, in my mind, one of the problems with nowadays, poor kids, you know, they got all kinds of bugs and ticks, mosquitoes, all kinds of stuff. People just don't go outside as much. So we really worry about stewardship of the next generation. And, um, this, this is an example of where the kids were involved. And you just never know sparks because interest. sparks an interest, but they were able to go out of the classroom mm -hmm. and, and go to Galinsky's farm and, and actually participate with the whole Very process. Grateful. Yeah. And, um, you know, so I just want to again, thank Galinsky so much because they were so wonderful to let that happen yeah. and and regenerative re design our consultants were so fabulous because they're so encouraging and working with the kids and explaining stuff and and having follow through with the class and and setting up the situation for a follow-up yeah. once we figure out what the state's doing right um because I'm, I'm on the task force to implement the healthy soils um action plan and, you know, so we're trying to align us as Deerfield, the first town in the state. Um, there are several other towns um, modeling on our plan, but um, we were the first and we are trying to align it with the state plan. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's pretty exciting, actually. Great work. Yeah. And so go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt, but I was just no, so it's... exciting. And I, I really wanted to thank the Galinskis because it, it was an opportunity for our kids. So, yeah. so much. That was a huge help. So the kids were really actively engaged in this. They were, you know, digging holes around the high school and so forth. And it was it's great. It was an exciting day for them, I think. Yeah. Um, Get off the phone. So the other thing that the project did was also did outreach to farmers more broadly. Um, we did a couple of workshops for farmers to help them understand, you know, the importance of this this mapping and work. And we did some targeted soil sampling on several farms, four or five of them in town. That will help us um, over the long term track the, the health of the soils on those farms. And hopefully there'll be some follow on grants and work that will be able to continue that that effort. Right. Um, so, again, hopefully this is this project is just a first step in a longer term effort town wide to um, protect and maintain our healthy soils. It's great. It's great. Um, one of the things, the reason why healthy soils is so important, I think, for Deerfield is in from the time when I was first on the planning board in the 80s and 90s and, and now on the select board here in the next, you know, the next century, the um, our water table has gone up 18 to 20 inches down here. And trying to figure out what how we can absorb and 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 filtrate the water in these intense events and, and try to mitigate that continued impact or that trajectory of our water table is going to be a huge important thing uh, you need what what climate change is doing for us is we're having intense rain events we're having drought periods of drought and we're having higher heat and and having healthy soils with root systems that will provide storage filtrate water and then release in drought conditions is is really critical and and i mean one of the things today um, I had was in a webinar uh, on Homeland Security and how hazardous events and emergency situations, how people's attitudes have changed. And one of the things is how, how does it on the local level, what's happening for us as a community, the government, what costs government, what climate change is costing government, but also your households. It's not just insurance costs. It's you know running those um, pumps in the in your cellar, twenty four seven, trying to you know fight the increased water table. So I, I we have a long ways to go, but this is a first step, and getting a ward is is 
is recognizing that mm -hmm. we are trying to do something. And I think that's huge. One. And I'd like to say that one of the interesting things that came out of this study working with regenerative was um, the, the, the amazing amount of water sequestration wetlands provide and, and also uh, gives us a reminder that wetlands aren't a nuisance, they're a necessary part of the environment. And um, we need to understand that, particularly in Deerfield, because we are, as Carolyn loves to say, at the bottom of the bowl, which means we uh, we have rivers all around us and uh, we're a wet place. And um, it's good protection for farmers. Uh, hopefully the, the state will get behind this and offer financial incentives to farmers to actually let some of the wetlands in their farm fields be restored so that their good um, area of the land is protected in big storm events. So it, it, it'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, that's one of my hopes too, is that the state um, will provide grant monies and we might be able to get some actual projects going in some of the farms in the area um, and, and provide some grants to help farmers with that, that effort. Great. Yeah. While you're here, I know it's a little off topic, but um, MVP, little bit. Um, I got an email from you about the, and I've been talking with Darius about the front of the elementary school. This is a little bit unanticipated, but um, I just saw you were here, so I wanted to talk about it. Um, we, I just want to understand we're not applying to MVP for that project, correct? But we do, I thank you for that plan. I hunted all over for the final plan. I had all the initial designs, but Chris came across the final plan from them. And that was more the radius kind of thing. And uh, we are trying to figure out how do we afford to do something to make it easy for the plow, but still kind of retain some of that water that's coming off the roof. Some of that stuff would, uh, I think we could do it under the MVP grant because from a security the, point of view, you want to rip up those bushes. The only issue is timing because oh. of the safety. We've oh, had yeah. children falling out of wheelchairs. We patched what we could. We need to dig that thing up in the spring and get it done before we wind up well, what's in serious you know, trouble. I'm not, sure that, I'm not sure that rushing anything like this, we're talking at a project that's going to affect the community for 20, 25 years. Um, and we wouldn't, we, we need to get back into the MVP program. I mean, it's a, a lot of communities now chasing a small, smallish pot of money, but um, it's, it's important for a community like us to, to go after every potential mm -hmm. source of revenue possible. So um, I know Kevin's here and he has his ideas about this, but, um, you know, I'd. Well, what's uh, the timeline on this? Yeah, the timeline, um, letters of intent are due January 24th. Um, grant applications will be due in March. They'll make awards um, probably in uh, May or June. Oh, well, that was uh, so the timing's not so bad in terms of that. But do we do we think? I mean, my my well, and I guess we could run a two track thing. Do we think we could get? I mean, we wouldn't fund it till after. Well, depend. Darius was trying to figure out how he could kind of get this rolling as well with, and then recoup well, we it through do, MVP. Or... We're going to do the O'Leary lot and we have an MVP for the O'Leary lot too. That So we, we have two plans that we need to modify somewhat. So can't we run, can't we ask, end up applying for part of the, both plans under this timeline? The green, the green infrastructure components of, of both plans would probably be eligible from my understanding of the right. criteria. Both projects, which we would pay 100% for. So why can't we submit an MVP application to offset a percentage of cost for both projects? Uh, I'm all for that. We just, I just know that, you know, we've like been both. waiting for, we're gonna if go, it works, we're, then great. We're, we're moving forward. We're going to do both of those projects. If Chris puts it in for the MVP, for any one of those parts, a percentage coming back, it's a win for us because we're going to do it anyway. And no, the timeline, agreed. and the timeline, if, as long as we're doing the project, we're matching it, by moving forward on the project, that's our match, then the 
if if the award is made in May or June, that's the timeline when we will be. We would do it up. anyway. Right. Well, I mean, we would probably start we it have for the Leary lot. We we need to move forward on that as soon as possible. We have to. And we have the front um, of the school to do as soon as possible. We do, and so the issue is, um, the school is applying for um, part of their capital for this year's budget to to do some of that project, and I'm not sure how much we talked about putting forward or not, if it got the split or whether you know, it was asked for all of it or something like that or whatever. So I was just trying to figure out and try to guide Darius back on what our point, because when we talked originally, we were like, well, let's not bother because of the timing on it. We've been waiting for years and we have the safety thing, but if it works and fits into the program, I we just got denied last time. So it was like, well, but then you said we didn't apply for that. No, we did not. And we we also got denied, if I understand correctly, because we hadn't spent the money that we had in the previous round, and so that was going to make us an ineligible for. We didn't we didn't apply the last time yeah. for the elementary school. Well, just no, to, no, just to I, clarify. Yeah. But we I meant apply for the Leary lot then. So we um, applied for one of them, and they said we no. applied. We got plans. We got plans for both. Right. Yeah. Under the MVP. Right. The design plans were paid for by MVP, which Correct. which gives us a leg up, I think, actually, because they already paid for the design. Right. And you would think they would want those designs to be implemented. Correct. Yeah. But I thought we applied for the Leary and we didn't get it. No. We we submitted, as I recall, we submitted it in the letter of intent, and they said that um, their response was that they didn't really want to pay for parking lots. That wasn't Got the intent it. of the program, but right. they would pay for the green components the green, right okay so tree maybe boxes, not the tree, tree, filters, the tree box, yeah, yeah those yeah. Good. yeah those other entities so maybe right. we can split it up here and there so yeah. i guess maybe a meeting with darius and us to kind of figure out a plan of attack he had called me this week and said hey can we yeah. get this back because he's trying to get yeah my, my applications concern, planning going so my concern was that we're pull, pulling up the bushes by the um we are, yeah. Uh, by the cafeteria because of safety issues. And, and that and is that, in the, the plan yeah. That, yeah. that I showed to. Yeah. And, I, and I want to make sure that we're dealing with the water. Right, because there's a ton of water that comes off there. And we do we did right. do some drainage when Kip was here. We did right. that drainage, right. but we really need to but study those, that. If we pull those bushes, that's a huge, I mean, those roots take up they a lot do. of water. They eat a lot so, of water. Yeah. Well, you know, in preparation for having this discussion, I did ask Chris Nolan to pull some of the previous MVP contracts because we're going to need somebody to lead on this. And uh, some you've been involved in both of those design plan projects. So, um, you know, I, I actually think we should we should ask and we're going to find out by early spring whether we're going to get any money for this and then we'll know exactly yeah. where we are okay i thought it was a lot longer time frame like a year or something before we would no. find out okay so if we're here then let's get a meeting together and get that going i just wanted to catch you while you were here and sure was thinking about it so we knew what so, to kind of reply so back to darius about what we need to do then is um as an item not anticipated because none of us anticipated right. it we did not discussion until we saw um, you that i would make a motion under un item not anticipated that Chris would move ahead with a letter of intent, um, you know, further discussion of what parts, what elements of both those plans could be recouped under the MVP. Because okay. we're moving forward with both of those projects for safety reasons. Right. And because we want the Leary lot done. So maybe we can get a meeting together with um, Darius and kind of talk about what input they have on the plowing part of it and Kevin as well, because I know we that Kevin, Kevin's been involved with. Sure Kevin yeah. uh, figures out how he's going to, you have to have some way to main, maintain it. But the other person I want to make sure we're involving is John Pachork because um, there was a, a couple other security issues, um, mm -hmm. design issues that were not in the MVP design that, you know, I Safety don't want to say, I don't want to say yeah. buffers or, Right, you know, barriers, but there was some a couple other things along those mm -hmm. lines that John wanted to make sure was incorporated. So, uh, I do sure. now have um, I re requested from the engineering company EBI um, a large set of plans because I know those smaller ones were hard to look at. Oh. Um, so I have those. We could sit sit down at a table and, and look at that. But That'd I do know that you know, for example, the the issue of plowing was considered by EBI, yep. and that's why they presented the plan the way they did so right. it was you know yeah let's part of the, get around part that of the thing okay take a look at it yeah
pull it apart. I think Casey had her hand up. I don't know if she still wants to ask. Hey, Casey. Actually, it was Kevin that had a question earlier. Oh, yeah, Kevin. Hope he didn't step away. No, he's he, he was there. there. He was there. I, I don't but he may have stepped away from the camera. <laughs> we All right, I tried. All right, that's fine. We'll catch him when he comes back. Um, yeah. So did you did you actually make a motion, Carolyn, or did you? I think she did. Yeah, I did. Did make a motion to um, to have the, the letter of intent as not anticipated to try and group in some of the MVP aspects of both of these have, projects. We can't have. I right. mean, we have to have a this direction. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, I'll, so I'll second that. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And we'll have to work with um, Casey on, um, you know, how, what sort of um, compensation we're going to providing for Chris to, to end this process. Really nail down kind of the reporting and all that, because that's been bills. We just want to make sure we're easy on staff. We're, Understood. We're losing a few of them. So we have been losing a few. We're gaining more, which is great. It's the end of the meeting. But yeah, so any help you can provide there would be great. Um, so, and then let's get a meeting together with Darius and Kevin and kind of yeah. pull that plan apart sometime in the next week or so. That sounds great. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you all. Thanks for all you do. Thank Appreciate you. it. Take care. Bye. Right. Thank you. And we have, we have made these poor ladies wait forever. I'm sorry uh, to make you wait. <laughs> I really appreciate your flexibility and patience. Um, I wish it was 630, but it's not. <laughs> we have um, Mass in Motion Municipal Wellness and Leadership Initiative proposals. So. Yes. Welcome. Oh, thank you very much. Yes. Yeah, and I know it's name. turning into a very late night for you. Yep. Okay, thank you. Great, but this is good to have out. We can share. Yep. Perfect. Um, and I think you've got these in your package, but these are packages going back to the Oh, okay. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. So <laughs> here we go. go. Update us. What are we doing here? Sorry to interrupt. Did somebody turn the camera off? Oh, thank you. Yeah, can you tilt that camera? Oh, uh, do we have it unplugged? It just went off all of a sudden a second ago. Oh, maybe. It... Oh, there we go. That's weird. Come back on, please. Hmm. That's weird. You had a you had a battery. There it is. Oh, there, oh, there you are. Works. Yep. Awesome. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Chris, for notifying us. All right. Should I kick us off? Yeah. Are we please ready? Do. Please do. Um, so thank you for having us. Um, my name is Rachel Stoller. I work at the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. This is Carol Foote from LifePath, and we are working together um, to present. So I'm presenting about the Mass in Motion initiative, which the town of Deerfield signed on to back about a year ago when we were applying for the grant. Um, and Carol is here representing the uh, regional age-friendly initiative. So I'll let Carol kick it off and then okay. I have stuff to say as well. Great. <laughs> so so yeah. welcome. Thank you. And thank you for having us. As Rachel said, I'm Carol Foote from Life Path, and I'm the age friendly um, Franklin County and North Quabbin project uh, program director. And, um, you know, just want to tell you a little bit about what's happening, why Life Path has taken on this project with the partnership of the FERCOG. Um, and basically, we're aging faster than ever before in the history of life. Especially and last so, three years. It's like very fast. Exactly. <laughs> um, and so um, just, you know, speaking about Deerfield, as of 218 data from the Healthy Aging Collaborative, which I shared with you, 21.2% um, of the population is over 60 and 16.2% is over 65. So, you know, it's a considerable um, portion of the, of the um, population and it's only growing from there. Um, and so what we are doing with this age friendly, um, we are taking the cue um, from 20 years ago when the World Health Organization um, started this movement, this age friendly movement, and it has since been taken over by AARP. And so, you know, that's who it's managed by in um, the United States. And Life Path is doing the lo very local um, project. Our catchment area is 30 towns, of which Deerfield is one of them. Um, and so the project itself 
was first getting towns to sign on and as um, to be recognized as age friendly. And I think Deerfield did that yeah. kind of before everybody yeah. else. Yeah. 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 Thank you for doing that. First in many things, <laughs> Deerfield. Yes. Um, and then other towns have signed on. We're at 25 of our 30 towns. So we are, you know, right. feeling great about the fact that this area wants to be recognized and do some work to be considered and to look age friendly. Um, and so AARP gives us these eight domains to kind of look at are these different buckets to say, we can do the work here, 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 here. And so that's in housing, outdoor spaces, transportation, communication and information, civic participation and employment, respect and social inclusion, health services and community supports and social participation. So in doing this work, we can try to address all of those, but no, we, <laughs> we want to look at the things that will speak to your own community or this region um, and make some changes that, you know, make sense for yep. Deerfield or the region. Um, and so the project that um, Life Path is currently in the middle of is that those towns asking in our catchment ar ar uh, area, sorry, to sign on to be recognized as age friendly um, through AARP. And so we're 25 of 30 towns there. We have conducted a needs assessment survey that was region wide. And so Deerfield had, I think, 55 respondents, 51% uh, uh, respondents of the 1,982, so almost 2,000 um, responses that we received. So um, I'm going to talk a little bit about the specific information that we got from Deerfield respondents. Um, but, you know, Rachel and I are here to kind of talk about how our work is meshing together. And some of that is what has come out of the survey and how that's gonna be used with the Mass in Motion work. So take it away, Rachel. Okay, thank you. <laughs> so um, Mass in Motion, if you're not familiar with it, is a statewide movement that focuses on supporting healthy eating and active living in our communities where we live, work and play, and, um, and in doing so reduces chronic mm. disease. Um, the, uh, the Mass in Motion grant that we're talking about right now is designed to be complementary to the regional effort. So I want to keep stressing it. That's why we come together because we want to demonstrate that we are working together. I'm actually on her steering committee. <laughs> um, so Mass in Motion has existed in the state for over 10 years. Franklin County has had it for about 10 years. I've been the coordinator. Um, under the previous incarnation of Mass in Motion, we worked on things like supporting complete streets work, which I know Deerfield has been involved in, supporting the initiation of the regional age-friendly work, um, and doing some work on farm to institution, working to get more local farm products into institutional food services, such as the public schools, particularly the public schools. Um, then last year, the um, Mass in Motion was rebid um, and so we decided to apply, we as the PROCOG decided that we wanted to apply to do something that would complement the regional age-friendly work by offering towns an opportunity to focus in on their own age-friendly planning specific to their town. And so 11 towns signed on to apply with us. I don't know if you remember signing on because it was a while ago. Um, and we submitted the application and we didn't hear until May and I was very surprised that we were funded. So now there are only about 10 mass in motion communities before there were something like 29. So they reduced the number, they increased the funding. So um, we took a little bit of time to get organized and now um, we're coming to you to tell you more about mass in motion, but some, right. some important tenets of mass in motion in general are that we um, address changing community conditions by looking at long-term solutions and the root causes of issues. So we work really hard to do that. We also use a leading with race framework, which understands that um, the social construct of race is at the root of many of our health inequities. Mm -hmm even in communities that are predominantly white. So it's important to understand that and also look at the inequities um, throughout our communities. As Carol said, our communities are aging. We want to encourage new people to come into our communities. How do we ensure that our communities are as welcoming as possible to all people? So those are a couple uh, tenets of Mass in Motion and I'll, I'll tell you more after Carol's talked a little bit about the data. 
Yeah. So I handed you this um, yes. spreadsheet, and just to give you a quick, um, you know, orientation, the um, red line is where Deerfield falls, and the black dot is where the region as a whole falls. So when, and that's noted at the top. So that, so you don't remember that, but um, you know, we wanted to kind of put them against each other so that you can see where Deerfield sits um, as opposed to you know or up against in contrast to um, the region itself. And, you know, I I will share just a few super highlights. Uh, so we the can, highlights of the so, highlights. So we can kind of move through this um, quickly. But, um, you know, Deerfield respondents are, um, has a have a higher percentage um, responding that they're, re uh, sorry, that they live alone. Yep. And so that, um, you know, is a place where a lot of work can be done. And if any um, of those respondents were thinking about making a change to their housing, um, they would look for better access to transportation and um, look for a place where cost of living is a little less. Um, and then they have re uh, reported that they receive um, less caregiving support um, and report good access to adequate caregiver support. So they're feeling well supported as far as what they need for caregivers or being a caregiver, as far as caregiving or being a caregiver, I'm sorry. Um, so, but they also feel that they have less conveniently located healthcare services and less access to wellness programs and mental health providers than the regional sample. So, you know, there's some work that could happen there. Um, Deerfield respondents are interested in volunteering for a neighbor's support group. Um, though 19% more than the regional sample would like to receive report uh, um, support from a group like that. Um, digital access and literacy are in step with the region, but Deerfield reports being stronger Zoom and video call users. Um, and Deerfield respondents feel they have fewer opportunities to volunteer and engage with a Deerfield civic type committee. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> I, you know, those were just some little snippets. Oh, it's in the back of the packet. Um, let's look at it. And there's way more to look at in here. Yeah, it's good data in here. <laughs> yeah, this is great. And yeah. I assume our senior center director has this as well. I assume. Um, you know, we haven't sent it out. This was kind of the day. Oh, okay. Of, great. <laughs> the great, yeah. We'll of the information. Get, get her this but, info. You know, we, um, Rachel will speak about, um, you know, forming a committee here in the town of Deerfield, um, which, you know, it would be lovely if someone from the Council on Aging could um, join that. But I am forming groups that are theme specific. So regionally looking at transportation, housing, um, healthcare and community supports, and civic participation. Um, and so that's the difference between, you know, what Rachel and I are doing. So looking regionally, and I've got these four work groups, and Rachel is looking for. Oh, are you <laughs> handing it over I'm to me? I'm handing it over. Okay. Um, so getting back to what we're looking for with Mass in Motion, um, if you want to look at the second page of the Memorandum of Understanding, that kind of gives a, yep. a scope of work. Um, and so the timeline, which is also in your, it's <laughs> page 21 of your um, slideshow. Yep. Uh, so right now we are having the first step in the timeline, which is the initial meeting with the um, select board. Um, and I'm not sure who is on Zoom. I, I know that Casey um, invited some other folks, including the Board of Health, the Council on Aging. I don't know who's we here. Are we are the Board of Health, too. Oh, oh, we're all kinds of Oh, cats. cool. So okay, great. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So that's covered. That's efficient. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, we, so we wanted to explain um, how the, the process works. The Memorandum of Understanding does offer $4,230, possibly a few dollars more, depending on how it all shakes out with all the towns, um, to support the planning process, which will go until the end of June. So. The planning process includes this meeting, um, the town convening some sort of a working group to meet with me and some other for COG staff to do this planning work. Um, the planning work involves looking at the this data that 
um, Carol is talking about from the regional assessment, looking at the data in more detail and doing some, I learned a new word today, ground truthing, like seeing how accurate is this data for this community? What are some other things we need to know? Um, there are some other questions that we want to ask, particularly related to food access, because mm -hmm. those weren't asked in the um, regional assessment, and that's an important component of health. Um, so we'll be looking at the data, um, then identifying what are the most compelling issues in this community, looking at those underlying causes. That's a lot of fun. Um, and there will be an opportunity uh, well, it's a required opportunity uh, for at least a couple of people from this town to participate in a health equity training that will be, it's a one day training. It will be in Greenfield in February. I should have the dates very soon. Okay. Um, this, uh, there will be breakfast and excellent lunch provided to, to keep people <laughs> interested for the day. Um, but what I'm excited about with this training, it will be provided by Mass in Motion um, and it will focus on health equity in rural communities. And I don't know if any of you know Kirby Lisi, who used to be with the um, rural health, the division of rural health. She's now the Mass in Motion director, and we have secured her as one of the trainers oh, for this. So she's from the North Quabbin. She's from, she is a farmer. Um, she now works for the Department of Public Health, but she knows rural communities. That's so great. that's a, it's a great relief to me that that mm -hmm. is who one of the trainers will be. Um, so we'll have that in February, and then the, the work group will continue to look at data, identify issues and underlying causes, and then get to the point of identifying strategies that you would like to undertake. There will be another 4,000 some odd dollars next year if the strategies can be implemented with that. But also if you choose a strategy that requires applying for funding, we will help identify sources of funding. Yeah. Um, Jennifer Remillard, or, or our senior uh, center director will be uh, all over this. I have no doubt. I mean, it really ties in with all the work that we're trying yeah. to trying to do at the moment too. Yeah. So we also, you know, know that you work very closely with Whiteley and yep, we do. Conway and yeah. you know Sunderland. Sunderland. And so, you know, there are opportunities there to, you know, pool or at least work right. together and that kind of thing. So, you know, yeah. it's a mini regional, really. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. 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 How many of those how many of those towns are identified as, are they in the 10? Uh, Waitley and Sunderland are also part of Mass oh, in Motion. So we, we were in Waitley last night and we'll be in Sunderland on Monday. That's great. So it's great. They're going to get their 4,200 worth of work and, we're, and, and we will. So yeah. oh, that's so, fantastic. Um, we all pull together. Yeah. We all pull together. Well, so not. yeah, you don't have to make that decision no. right no, now. Okay. We wanted to give each town a chance to sort of look at their own data and then make some decisions. And if you would like to team up, if all three towns want to team up, that's like fine. But we didn't we didn't want to assume that. We do we do really almost everything together, South County. Obviously we have a our uh, EMS um is South County and our senior center is South County, which yes. is Waitley Deerfield Sunderland. So and our director kind of manages and takes care of the seniors and works with the um, Council on Aging in all three towns. So we, we try to tackle everything together. You have to. If right. you're a small community, you have to get grouped no, together. No, I think I think that would be we, awesome. We well together. And we so. just we wanted to make that point because we do know that about yeah. this area, okay. you know, okay. just that you are closely knit that way. Yeah. But, well, as Rachel said, you know, to make sure that you it know, could be independent also, if needed. Yeah. yeah <laughs> for sure. No, understand well, that. It just yep. it, it makes sense that we pull together and try to come up with a hemp product that's that's better mm -hmm. for all three yeah. of us. Yeah. But I, I think I mean I've in the past over the years I've you know um testified that one of the things that's really um discouraging is health access to seniors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um I, I really would like you to address that somehow because you know in the past if, if your friend if your family or your neighbors they could take you to a, a doctor's appointment in Greenfield and no big deal. Yeah. Now all the healthcare systems are, all your doctors are in Springfield now, They're all their specialists, everybody. So now it's it's intimidating for older drivers, friends to drive friends to the doctor's appointments. It's intimidating for family members who have to take time off yep. to take, you know, it's an all day trip now to go down and visit, visit those doctors. So we we truly have healthcare access issues for our seniors. Yep. Mm -hmm. And um, also, you know, there's, I know from the pandemic, that there's food security issues mm -hmm. because people just are not storing 
um, you know, they don't have things in the pantry like they did years ago. And, and, but part of it is just going to getting to the grocery store. You have to go out of town. And again, it's transportation. So it's yeah. transportation and healthcare access. And it's, yeah. it's really, it, it hurts our seniors really oh, a lot. Absolutely. And it absolutely. doesn't help that and everything is more expensive. Oh, yes. yeah, and we true. have an overhousing situation where yes. people, they're living in giant old houses by themselves yes. and they need, you know, support and you know, we're trying to get senior housing. We're working on that, but Sunderland just completed yes, their, their yeah. project. Project, and, um, which is great. But you know, we we do have an, you know, for the foreseeable future, we have an overhousing problem. People say housing is not available. That's not true. It's just yeah. a, it's inappropriate right. for older seniors. Well, and and, and they want to stay in their homes, which is yeah. totally understandable. So yeah. we've got to come up with. It is a community way to deal with some of these issues that seniors have. Yeah. Um, just to speak directly to that one person who raised a family and is now alone yeah. in that four bedroom house or whatever it is, um, a plug for uh, a new program that LifePath is, um, is, is managing, spearheading um, called HomeShare. And it is, um, you know, exactly to address that, that someone who doesn't want to leave their home, maybe yep. they're at a point that they do need some more support mm -hmm. and that there is an exchange for living in that space and providing some support Transportation, for that, some you know, yeah, absolutely. so. Um, you know, I would encourage right. anyone who might be open to that type of situation. There's a vetting process, there are background sure. checks, there's that kind of stuff. Um, but it's a brand new, brand new program that life path because of That's the need fantastic. that you've just described. It, right. So is there a is there a a vetting process is great, but yes. I mean the actuality of living in a in a space, particularly when you're dealing with an aging population and dementia might be coming into play, um, there's got to be constant, you know, follow up. Yeah. Yeah. And as I understand it, there is management in that way, but yeah. that the arrangement is um, is made between the parties. It's not like this is a cookie cutter. Got it. Oh you yeah. Know, kind yeah. of a thing. Yeah. yeah. I'm just suggesting. So like that, that stays involved. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. otherwise, it you know could be problematic. Sure. We just yeah. had a dog hearing tonight. So. <laughs> here for it. Here for it. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> anyway, okay. sorry to put the plug in, but I couldn't. Yeah, no, that was good. good to know. It's good to know yeah. what's out there and what people are working on. Right. So, so, um, so I just wanted to wrap up in terms of the mass in motion process. Um, one of the, as I mentioned, mass in motion uses a leading with race framework, and we ask what are called the racial justice reframing questions, which will be part of this process, sort of looking at existing policies or programs. And as we think about new um, strategies, asking the following questions, which are who benefits, who is harmed, who influences, who decides, and what are the unintended consequences? And so, um, you know, I've been sort of ingrained with these, asking these questions now for years, but they're really helpful in thinking about uh, uh, who might be in experiencing inequities and how do we address those? Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to introduce those questions. They're great to ask, you know, in, in really any any circumstance. Um, and uh, I'm not going to ask you to vote on the MOU tonight. I don't know if you've had a chance to review it. Not yet, it's, so it's fine to do it at a future meeting. Okay. Um, and we are asking you to um, pull together a group of people. I also wanted to mention that the funding can be used really for anything that will support the planning process. So okay. if you need to pay for transportation to get people to work group meetings or compensate work group members or compensate someone to be a work group leader, uh, compensate people to attend this full day training. Um, right. If you need, you know, equipment for meetings, anything, yep. food for meetings, okay. all of those things, um, it can be useful. That's super helpful. Really helpful. I, I'm anxious to talk to, to Jennifer about it for sure. And I'm sure she'll hear from. Yeah. Know, and and also please feel free too. to reach out to me if you have yeah. questions or if there, somebody else needs to understand it better, they can just get in touch with me and, um, and I your can meet with them. In the back here. Got yes. It. Perfect. And, and mine too for the regional four work groups. Yes. And so I'm yes. putting in a plug for the regional yeah. work groups as well and as the individual. Yes. yes. Great. That's really great. <laughs> 
Well, yeah. it's great because it feels like there is, um, you know, momentum and interest it's and the need, time. you know, yep. right now. And so um, we're excited every time we do one of these because, you know, we do walk away with a positive feeling yeah. like, yes, yep, moving forward. Yeah, yep. it feels good. It's good work. Thank you. So just one quick question. Yeah. I um, I noticed yes. that 52% <laughs> of Deerfield folks think this is a fair or poor area as a place to age and um, mm -hmm. hopefully something that you can help us move up. Yeah. And, it, sure. and it's, it reflects the just region. Small. Yeah. Yeah. Is that right? Yeah. Well, it's <laughs> The true. region is right next to it and yep. your field is, you know, it's sort of similar. Yeah. 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 Um, but I think that it is reflective of what the need is, mm -hmm. you know, that as we age, we need. And the obstacles that are here. Yeah. 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 So we're, both of our goals are to increase the number of people who say it's a good place to age. That's, That's right. Perfect. <laughs> we're on board. We're happy yeah. with that. Yeah. Yes. Sounds like a good goal. So thank you so much for thank yes, you very much for having us so nice tonight. Okay. Don't yeah. worry about it. No. We um yeah. it's we'll been a that. long night for you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Casey. Happy, happy holidays. You too. Uh, let's see. Next item is the Healthy Soils Action Plan release. Did we do that already? Um, or not? Well, I don't see it in the. Package, no, but... the reason why um I'm, I want to just hold off on that. Oh, okay. Because I'm I'm on the uh, state commission for soil and uh, water and related resources, and and I'm a member of that task force. Yep. Supposedly, the governor is going to approve the Massachusetts plan before the end of the year. Okay. Which is in only in two weeks. Yeah. And they're also supposed to release the money for our conservation district, which had put in a forty thousand uh, dollars grant request for, you know, doing our yard by yard program. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that hasn't been announced yet either. Although I feel like we sent a letter of intent, we were asked to apply, and that usually means we're going to get it. Yeah, but Just but the money hasn't been released okay. yet or announced. So I, I'm hesitant for us. To approve this in case we need to make some adjustments. That's fine. We'll come okay. back to it. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Um, Tim, did you want to hit on the old year for wastewater treatment discussion thing um, tonight? Or do you yeah, okay. I think that that's um, a reasonable thing to do. Um, I added uh, first, it, it, are we reached the select board reports thing? Oh, yes, we have. So okay. you can so you can tie it right into yeah, that if you want. Sure. Yeah, the first thing I wanted to do is say that I have written and shared an, a letter to uh, Maura Healy and Kim Driscoll about oh. the library project. And um, I'm not sure if it's been shared with the rest of you, but I, I asked um, the uh, aides for both Comerford and Blay uh, if they had any information about where to send the, the letters because they're in transition. And there's only in, um, you can file it electronically through the transition team website, which um, I can, I think, they shared the links with Casey and Chris, but if not, I'll forward them to them. So I wanted you to, I don't know if you, it's similar to the I, previous I letter. I see an email real quickly, but I'd love to yeah. read it while you talk. Yeah. Basically, it uh, talks about our meeting with Kim Driscoll during the campaign. Yep. And, and it also mentions uh, a recent experience in Westboro where they uh, their vote went against the town because they didn't want to finance the extra 13 million. So um, I think it's a, uh, some of the same themes in the first letter we prepared, yep. but uh, advances the ball. And uh, so I, I read the letter, Tim, and I am 100% supportive of us sending this, making sure this gets out. We need to hustle. Um, I think Senator Tarr's um, office is the one that's the lead on our legislation right. for the library money. And um, I mentioned him in the letter. Yes. So we just need to make sure that we keep the pressure up. Mm -hmm. um, and that was one of the priorities I wanted to make sure we met with the other towns down at, at the, the MMA, MMA conference yep. so that we can coordinate our efforts because, you know, I, we we have a cho the ARPA money seems to be off the table, but there's now IRA money that um, Inflation Reduction Act money, and there's also Pavo money. And my understanding is that they're thinking of doing the Pavo money. And what the Pavo money is is really just left over at the end of the fiscal year. So we're talking about 
April or May timeframe, right. which is still fine. Right. Um, I mean, we'll take whatever, but my concern is that they're just going to give us a few hundred thousand and what we need is a few, you know, three or 4 million. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I want to be able to make sure that we have real actionable steps on how we're going to follow you mean up the MMA this. or yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, we, we got to keep the pressure up so that somehow, I mean, it's still a small amount of money, but for us as individual communities, it's a huge amount of right. impact. Right. As, as, as the recorder article that Chris Larrabee wrote, you know, that today, you know, the impact can be reduced by a yeah, well amount. Very well done. Thank you. If uh, we get the additional funding. Yeah. And um, so if this is okay, we can just, um, yeah. Yeah. you know, either, either I can send it with board approval or Casey. Or well, Chris I can, can make a it. motion that we approve the letter to be sent. I'll second the motion. Yeah. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. You can, you can use our stamp or, you know, we can sign it if it's ready, either one. Yeah. Oh, it's just you on the, on the bottom. No, anyway. it's all of us. Oh, it is. Okay, yeah. great. I just, yeah, it says the select board, right, Tim? Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I just didn't want to name, our, I didn't have our names stacked because I want to keep it on two pages. Two page. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> that sounds good. Because before it was like we were all on the back page. Yes, yes. Um, that's fine. That and then, sense. um, to follow up on your question about the old deer, uh, the old Deerfield wastewater treatment plant, uh, yeah. I recently reached out to several communities that have had similar. I think all of us, the, the towns out here had their sewer plants built in the same era, mm -hmm. and they're all confronting the problems with those plants. All EPA and funding. slowly but surely, we're all getting to the same place where we're seeking USDA grants and funding and loans, and. Um, one thing that came out, and I think, you know, coming full circle, Elisa Mead may have advised us months ago before I was on the select board that the town, in order to make sure that we get what we want, the town really has to control the design process. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm sure that's for legal reasons and for reasons of control and for reasons of being able to, uh, you know, enforce contracts, et cetera. So um, I've sort of come around to the idea that although it might be interesting to have advice from an engineer working for another agency to contribute to thought thinking about a plan the town develops that really the town needs to employ its own engineer and make its own decisions and uh, proceed in that fashion. So I just wanted to mention that in the meeting and, you know, let you you folks think about it as well or or and and because uh, we do need to start moving forward on this um the recent problem with the electrical uh situation at, at the old Deerfield plant shows us that things can anything can happen anything can happen and although it's you know being able to be limped along um and i'd also like to i met with eric meals um and had a good conversation with him, and he said uh, that he would like to contribute to discussions during the design phase Absolutely. because he can say, you know, this is really not important. Mm -hmm. This is less important, and he runs it all day. Yeah, and he knows what you know. Like uh, the South Deerfield plant has a grid system, mm -hmm. and it also has um, headworks that strips out stuff and. Mm -hmm. Say in a smaller plant, maybe you don't need the grit system. Right, if you've got the headworks. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, right. you know, particularly if um, any of the schools has a pre-treatment mm -hmm. where they actually treat the uh, the septage before it gets to the plant. Mm -hmm. um, so all of those things seem to make sense to me, but um, I'm not the one only one involved in this and you have so much more knowledge of this well not, not a lot you're like you're really getting up to speed where i was so i, I really you know i i really appreciate the nonprofit's effort to um to help help with this project because they they do see how how much they use it and it is you know it's all in everybody's best interest to come up with a with a program that a, a product that will work for all of us long into the future um you know and i know DPC put together a kind of a memorandum of, of kind of our, 
our needs, you know, what, what we feel is most important in that plant. And we don't feel like, you know, certainly you can look at our usage and say, oh, this plant is permitted for way more than we use on a day-to-day -day basis. But it really isn't designed for a day-to-day -day basis. It, it's designed for worst case scenario. And in 2011, when we had the horrible rains and, and, and Irene, we went way over. So yeah. plus reducing your usage um, and, and asking the DEP to say, oh, we want to reduce how much our plant is permitted for really shoots us in the foot long term because it, it loses that ability for growth. And I, I do. So and there was that and there was a few other things that we felt were important, like headworks, clarifier, you know, looking at different ways to, to do it. And I think the last plan that kind of came up, well, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't a massive, you know, money spent to kind of lay the whole thing out, but it was a good back of the envelope plan that I think that we all felt comfortable we should move forward with um and i had really was hoping that the the nonprofit showed an interest in wanting to kind of help with the design i was really hoping the two our design team and if they have somebody in mind could sit in a room for one day or a half a day and just say these are our wants and needs and if they have another idea that's dramatically different we will listen but generally um you know i i just it's not rocket science so it's not like there's some other thing that it's not fusion right mm -hmm. <laughs> energy so we're not going to like come up with a separate thing that's going to be so dramatically different that it's going to be a whole lot less money than what we're looking at and certainly it does cost munis municipalities more money to do projects than private entities but i still believe like we the town needs control over what we build who we hire and what we're going to do long term and mm -hmm. we need all the help we can get so i just felt like if we could all get in a room and talk about it or not all of us but just the yeah. engineers to kind of lay that out i yeah. think we just need to move forward in that direction right i do too but it would be good to make sure that eric is part of that absolutely he yeah. works yeah. the plant knows it better than any of us and and i do think that um there is a real conceptual design that's been presented to the town as opposed to you know an idea that it can be built for less money but there's no real plan to discuss mm -hmm. and rather than um rather than encouraging you know anybody to spend money on a speculative thing that the town is unlikely to implement um that engineering firm is not working for the town it's working for a group of entities that have an idea that they can do something less expensively um at the same time you know the town is the entity that has the ability to go to usda and get loans and grants at you know below market rates so um it could end up that working on our plan would be less expensive for the the nonprofits in any case so mm -hmm. that's just where i am and um you know i at our last meeting there was an expression that um you know I thought we were working cooperatively on this and perhaps they feel that they are too but they just sort of said oh, we're going to move ahead with this so um without even engaging on the plan that that we brought back to them so my feeling is that it would be saving them money um, to just maybe think about working with our engineers on a plan and and you know, we obviously have to come to some conclusion about which engineer we're going to use, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, we went through an extensive RFQ process before, mm -hmm. and I think the town vetted several of the people that, and decided DPC was the right way to go. Um, we've had a good experience, if I'm understanding correctly. Mm -hmm. So in any case, I think I think I'm now, you know, in favor of, you know, taking this back in-house and and uh, moving forward looks like there's a hand up oh hey julie i don't know hi um there may be just to throw a comment out there there may be value in having a completely independent estimate that you can compare back to the um other engineers project no i i think that all along i've said that i think that's an interesting way to go my problem is that the engineer is not working for the town. So if they want to pay for an engineer that reports to the town, that's different than paying for an engineer who's going to give an answer that a group that has a special interest in wants. 
So it's not independent. Um, so I, I, I do have that problem with that thought process. And then if we get a, a design that in theory might work, what I heard from a couple of towns is that that went through similar exercises was that at the end of the day, they're now having to go to the USDA to repair problems that arose after plans were implemented and put in the ground, and now they're not functioning properly and they've created ancillary problems. Um, and so I worry about the risk that a town uh, in pursuing something like that. That's just my thought. And uh, I would love to have somebody engage with DPC, for instance, on the plan that the town has sort of come to think is, is a logical place to go, but there didn't seem to be any interest in that in the last meeting. So maybe I'm misreading what I saw, but. Yeah, I think we get, let's get that answer, right? You know, right on the table and just say, look, where are we at with this? And we think it's, we've been saying it makes most sense to get the engineers in a room together to have this initial discussion right off the bat and just see where we're at. And, and you know, I, if again, if they want to keep continuing to develop a plan, but if, if you're not getting the buy-in here, I think that's what they were looking for. And we just feel like I would have buy-in if we could have our engineer in the room to have a discussion initially on like ground rules, but that hasn't happened yet. And mm -hmm. it's been weeks and I worry like, and I'm not sure, um, you know, it's a, it's not rocket science, but it's also not totally simple. You're right. You're and, right. Um, you know, somebody picks up on the word, what's the minimum requirement? Mm -hmm. And they focus on the minimum requirement and then they don't, they come up with a plan that is inadequate in other areas. And, you know, you haven't defined every possibility and then you get into an argument. And, uh, but yep. Julia has her hand again. Okay. Welcome. <laughs> and back to my value of the independent estimate, though. If they go ahead and do an independent estimate and it comes up radically lower than the other estimate, then you compare the two and you can say these are the differences. This, you know, this more expensive plan brings in A, B, and C features that your plan doesn't have. Mm -hmm. And it allows you to think through the cost of those features. Um, yeah. So. You know. no, no, uh, that's a, you know, I think what we wanted was let's value engineer this plant design we have come up proposed and there doesn't seem to be an interest in doing that. And if we move ahead, we're going to have to pay our engineer, whoever that is, to, to go forward on bringing the plan up to a point where it can be submitted to the USDA. Um, do we want to wait four months? Oh, is that the time frame they're talking about? They're talking about. April or May, when they would come back to us with uh, a, a plan um, and spend a, a considerable, not an, in, not an insignificant, well, certainly for the town, it's a very significant number. number. And then we don't go forward with that plan and they end up paying for the other plan anyway. Um, and so anyway, um, we don't have to make a decision tonight, but okay, just voice them where you're feeling and right. where we're at. Okay, I have to say I'm in agreement with Tim on this. Mm -hmm. I, I'm, I do value the other plan. It sounded like they were going to spend the money anyway. It's up to them. We can look at it, but I think it's necessary for us to move ahead too. Um, I'm, I'm just worried because nothing could happen in five years. Um, we could band-aid it mm -hmm. and continue on and nothing will happen. But what I am worried about is if something happens, we're in a crisis situation, we're gonna pay 10 times more for a band-aid solution to yeah. keep it going. And that's not appropriate way to spend our money. We know we have to do something. We know it's at the end of the life. So we, sh I agree, we should be making at least some effort to move forward. Um, I don't feel like we have, I, I don't want to commit a lot of money yet, but I think we need to be making sure that we're putting our list together, what should be incorporated. And then, I mean, we can have a discussion with the nonprofits when they come with their 25%. It sounded like they were going to have a phased approach for the spring. Well, 
you know, we got so much stuff going on that maybe they'll come with their first list of stuff and we can match it to our list of stuff and say, look, these are the kind of things that are missing or, oh, look, it looks like a pretty good match. Or the other thing is to say, if you want to have an alternate plan, donate the money to the town, we'll hire a different engineering firm, we'll ask them to design a plant uh, up to a certain point and then make a determination of which direction we want to proceed. But I do think the town has to be the one hiring the engineer um, because otherwise you're not having an engineer working for the town. Yeah. And you're not controlling the process. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So I would, it is, would be lovely just to Kevin not has have hand up. Hey, Kevin. Kevin, you're, you're muted. You're, okay, got it. Um, <clears throat> just a point of information. We are working with with DEA right now as far as the um, pipe going from the track all the the rest of the way. Um, I I, re, I reached out to DPC. We got some updated uh, some numbers and and we sent resent them out again. Um, so now that's open for discussion to see to see where we can go uh, possibly towards springtime. Right. So at least we're 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 moving forward with it, making sure that you know we're trying to get as much done as we possibly can with with the assistance from from the nonprofits. Yeah, they've been super helpful in that the piping and the and the manholes and stuff. That project came out really great last year or year yeah. and a half or so now. And yeah. um, we, we just need to need to finish it the last leg. It's it's the last, but it's it's still a lot of money. You it know, is. If, if, yeah. if it was yeah. if it was all just just lining. Um, that wouldn't be quite so bad, but there's a lot of open cut that needs to be right. put in there too. And with that being said, the open cut is um, probably three times the cost of the lining. So, it is um, permitting and the water table and exactly, you know, and it is what it is, you know. And then the other thing we really, really ought to think about is is uh, maybe moving that over a little bit um, because we are right there at the edge where we've got uh, deterioration from that little oxbow area by. Uh, Little metal road heading out to the plant, so sure. that's something else we need to. I mean, there, there, there's, there's the big picture we really need to look at to make sure that when we're going forward, we're going to do this the right way. Um, you know, that may involve having to, you know, speak with some of the farmers. You know, can we get a right away through here? You know, can instead of a, a straight flow where we're at right now, can you know, can we <clears throat> come down the hill and 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 head east a little bit further into the fields? So that way, you've got a little bit more of a buffer because. You know, right. like you keep saying with with the events that we are having, um, you know, that embankment continue just deteriorates and pretty soon, I don't want to say immediately, but, you know, a couple of more Irene's and there'd be a pretty good chance that that sewer main would be exposed. So, I mean, if we're if, if things going to get moved, you know, if we're going to be replacing, you know, let's let's not shoot ourselves in the foot and let's let's go a little bit extra and make sure that we get ourselves climate resilient for this project. Kevin, I can't agree more. That was um, that was the, we got the grant that seven almost eight hundred thousand dollar grant hazardous mitigation grant to replace that section of pipe. Yep. Yep. Um, and then we couldn't use it because our hazardous mitigation plan was um, held up at FEMA. Yep. You know, approval. We. Yep. I remember that. Time. Yep. Remember that. Yep. Um, I do. And one of the things, the reason why it was so important to get that pipe replaced was because it was at risk for one or two more events. Yeah. Correct. So we, need to re we need okay. to replace Let's it somewhere that. else. Mm -hmm. So who, who did the engineering on this project? DPC. Right. So uh, DPC. And, and, and just and just so we're aware, you know, what, what was shared is just strictly uh, replacement of in kind where it is now, like pull it right. out and 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 just replace as you go along. Um, you know, right. this other would require a little bit more again because you'd be having to talk with with landowners, um, and you know, you, more engineering have to be put into play because you'd have to look to see what your elevations are to make sure, you know, you're not getting yourself into trouble there by moving out so far. You know, you don't want a flat right. spot. And I mean, there's you know, there's no there's no letters after my name, but I know enough when to say when and let somebody else know to yeah. do that. You know. Um, but it, we're talking about that before going moving ahead at all for sure. Yeah, so, they had done the first um, Tim, they had done the first um, well when we did that first um, CMOM where they ran the cameras through everything. Mm -hmm. That one section from 
the top of the hill down to the plant was in really bad shape, like big holes in the pipe right. and stuff. And so we did what was emergency right away. And we still had really tough stuff going down, but they were willing to kind of tackle one section. Of right. it. So they did that. And then we had this other section that still needed to get done. Mm -hmm. so, All right. Plus, All right. plus they lined, they lined from the dining common, because that's about where that beginning of that line comes, the main um, comes down. Um, towards the cemetery and then it cuts across uh, um, the Barton. president's, the president's field or whatever you want to call it, cuts across yeah. there by the generator and then it heads down the hill from there down to the track. So yeah. they made it as far as the track. Yeah. Um, but from the track to the plant still needs, that's 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 in discussion right now. Um, yeah. and, and I just forwarded the information to um, to them so that way they are they can start thinking about it and talk to their trustees and see which direction they need to go in. Okay. You know, um, a lot of the pricing is is still kind of up in the air for the simple fact is, is we all know that, you know, availability of, of people and, and supplies is so volatile. We don't know, you know, is it going to be really expensive now? You know, if you wait another six months, it's going to be a little better. You know, it's not really huge, but, you know, you, you, you can have a little bit of time with the students there. But I mean, if they're full blown, you, you can't shut down that line because that's Mm -hmm. that's their main feed to the plant so you know but you don't want to stretch this out to two years now you know it's just so many things that really need to come into play that's why i'd like to see if if people can start thinking about looking at uh, the op the or the other option of being able to go out around a little bit just yeah. just a thought okay so. thanks kevin um all right so moving on um any select board reports or announcements? Anybody oh, here? Well, I just um, board of health stuff. I, I alluded to it earlier about the webinar that I was on today on hazardous situations. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that they noted was there were at, because of the 2017 hurricane year, 2019. I don't know how Homeland Security did this, but they said that not, the United States was at its probably highest level of preparedness, but um, by 2021, it was one of the lowest in the last recent couple decades, and the reason since 9/11 actually, and and the reason why they felt is you know the whole country was 100% affected by the pandemic, and the focus was on that, mm -hmm. and that we need to refocus on um, yeah. natural disasters again, which. As a town, we made that decision are, already in, in the summer, mm -hmm. and we are doing training and all that kind of stuff. But what was really interesting is hazardous mitigation money has been in the past only like $25, $50 million a year kind of thing. The last two years, uh, it went up to $200 million and then $500 million. But this past year, it was $2.5 billion, and they are considering... Um, that level going forward because they want us to be more resilient and build more climate change resilient stuff. And so spend the money. The, well, what I'm saying is the pot is going to be so much, so much bigger, and we got all this so many projects. so many projects that fit the bill, and that we we really need to get organized on how we're going to. You know, just how we're doing the CCI, how we're focusing in on the campus. How do we get money for Senior Center? Um, you know, the 1888 building, the church, mm -hmm. all this stuff. We're out hustling money. We got to hustle, organize our projects so we can take advantage of this money because we fit the bill. We yep. have all the background work. We've done work for years and we have documentation. So we've got to figure out what we're going to do. So I just, Wanted to bring this up because this this is going to fit in with Kevin's operation, and we have bundled notice of intent for maintaining our culverts now. So if something blows out, we we have the ability, we should have the ability to get some money to do this. And I I just want us somehow to figure out what we're again we got to organize so that we don't miss these opportunities because yep. we we as a town can't afford to. Um, you know, we, we take on the climate change impacts of the, co the costs. Mm -hmm. And I, one of the things 
we should be looking at is a new pavement plan because the pavement plan that Kevin has that he's been working on, which is gives the priorities, you know, everybody's in a list. It, it's not incorrect in the in the listing of the roads, but it's incorrect in its analysis now because of climate change, our pavement is no longer lasting 15 or 20 years. It's breaking up because of the freeze warm cycle of our winters. So we've we've got to figure out what we're going to do for pavement. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's and that's a huge amount of money that we spend. We spend all our chapter 90 money on that every year. So yep. I, I just it's it's in the back of our mind. We got to think about it. it's just one more thing, but we 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 have somehow have to have guidance on this. So okay. I'll get off my soapbox. Thank I'm you. Sorry. It's all right. I nope, know. Just trying to roll so long. Anything but, you got, Tim, or you, you Trevor? Do we want to deal with these minutes? We do. We do. Um I, I just just the announcements real quickly was just to hit on um, the 350th Jubilee is on New Year's Eve. Please get your tickets. Please yes. come and celebrate with the town. Um, it's gonna We're going to have a tree time. lighting ceremony too on um, on January 1st. January 1st. Okay. Yep. Great. At 430, we'll have, it'll, it's not a big public event, but we want people to know that the cake will be lit up January 1st. Very nice. And we want to thank the Galinskys for Transporting the cake, oh, you know, huge help. to get the cake up here. They donated a flatbed. You know, Fred, Becca, with all kinds of volunteers, including Tim, have been working to get this set up. And we, it's just really wonderful. There but, will be no cake cutting, but right. we are lighting it. That's we all. will light it. And, the, and there are tickets available. Stan Adams, you can call Stan Adams. And I think his number is 665-4858, but I'm not 100% sure. It's in our minutes. From yes, there. we'll find it. Yeah, people will find it. Okay. Um, let's Jar. see. So um, I just hit on Board of Health real quick was just, um, you know, again, get get flu vaccination, get your boosters. Um, hospitals are filling up with, you know, all three trifecta. You got COVID, you know, you've got the flu and you got RSV. So it's really good. Um, uh, on the DPH call on Tuesday that I was on, the flu shot is turning out to be an excellent match yep. for what's circulating this year. So please, please get your flu shot because yep. it's, it's really affecting people. And um, item not anticipated, this letter um, is written up. It's just, I didn't know if we, if you guys supported this, we could um, get this on our webpage. You could put it on uh, Deerfield Now. And what is it? It's um, in the mailbox, but it, it's a, just, precautionary oh, for the okay. holidays kind of thing what you know all right let me read that in a second yep. um good. uh let's see so minutes you want to hit on minutes we've got oh i'll make a motion because some of these i know that um tim was not here for so we'll probably stay well i do you have them you want to go january 10th 2020 uh, i'll make a motion to approve okay i did read them all and i feel good about all of them i didn't have an I, issue I, with anything I didn't um, notice anything. I can't so I'll second the motion for January. January 10th, 2020. 2020. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. The 15th, I will make a motion to approve. Do we have a second? And I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. January 29th. January 29th. I make a open. motion to approve. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Next set. Is July 29th. I make a motion to approve. And uh, a second. What? Which date? July, July 29th. 29th. And that is 2020. 20. 2020. With a second. I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, the next one is August 12th, 2020. It's 12th, 2020. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi abstain. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, I make a motion for October 12th, 2022. I'll second it. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then, uh, is that it? Yeah, yep. that was it. I shouldn't say it just like that because I can't thank you enough. 
whoever's Chris, are you doing Thank, these? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Super helpful. Whoever's tackling these things, it's looking awesome to get caught up. I, I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So thank Full you. Full credit to Alex Hershenreder. He's oh, been great. incredible you, with these minutes. Yeah, that's it's super helpful. Very grateful. Um, so let's see. We've got um, discussion items. So we have ad hoc human rights committee. Uh, these are all placeholders. Appointments for the ad hoc committee. Um, appointment for Jason Curtis to the energy committee. I mean, I I feel like we could do Jason Curtis to the okay. energy committee, but. I, I, I'm oh, sorry to interrupt. I need to tell you guys something. Yeah, go um, ahead. So I look back in the bylaws, and the Energy Resources Committee isn't created in the bylaws, but an Energy Conservation Committee is, and it has a nine-member appointment uh, group. I don't know if we consider them to be the same thing or not, but I wanted to warn you. Um, just in case anybody questions it not that you would appoint not appoint jason they have eight right. members right now but okay. we may have to deal with this yeah. on a bylaw level at some point <laughs> okay yeah it sounds like sometimes things move along and then drift around and library trustees is common you know example but um and any other kind of thing that we do um so yeah so that sounds good we'll we'll re revisit that bylaw and make sure everybody's on board and revote we need to revote but um, I would entertain a motion to appoint Chris Curtis to the energy. No, committee. Jason. Oh, excuse me, Jason Curtis. Yeah, I'll make that Chris motion. on my mind here. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? No. Okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And thank you, Jason. Yes, thank you for your service. We appreciate that. Um, and then we'll, are we going to hold on the human rights until we yes. read, the, read the letters and stuff and take some time? Okay, good. Telecommuting policy. We well, have... We should make an announcement that we still want people to. Oh yes, please, please do. Yes, yeah. so we have seen um, some letters come in. We've and... got nine, eight or nine. Oh, have, okay, great. Um, yeah, Casey or and Chris included it in our packet. Okay, perfect. Yep. Yeah, I'll go through and read those. Um, uh, so yes, please. I, I know somebody had reached out to me during the voting, the election, and I can't recall who it was, but they did say that they wanted to be a part of it. I don't recognize the name here, but if anybody is listening and remembers speaking to me about that and is still interested in serving, please let me know and uh, or let Chris know and come on in and, and send in a letter uh, of um, interest. Um, telecommuting policy, we had a first read on that. Are you at a place where we're good to go? I know some of the stuff still has weight, um, Worcester in it, but those are kind of examples, correct? Yes, so we are in a place to accept the telecommuting policy, and then I would let Alex Castro know that we need to convert the Worcester documents. Okay. Uh, we can always change them later, but yep. they're a good they're a good basis to be clear with people. Yep. Anybody have any issues moving forward, or do you want to take more time with that? I'm, I'm fine policy. with it. I, I, I mean, I I think what we should do is just vote the policy and then if there's any issues that come up we we'll can just amend adjust it. it yeah yeah okay i mean if we try to sit here and... i'll entertain a motion to approve okay. the telecommuting policy uh, i will make that motion i'll well, second it any further okay. discussion at the moment all those in favor tim hilchie aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn that's aye and i want to thank casey for working on this i know you've done a lot on this moving things around and adjusting and making sure it's right and just working on it and trying to make sure it's as yeah. as as close to what we need as yeah. we can do now. It may change later. Yeah, let us know what you need when you need it. Um, Thank you. We've got um, some licenses to approve tonight, and I think we did. Uh, let me just get through this real quick. So we did the. Um, these are oh common vehicular. Um, you did the liquor licenses. The common victuallers are associated with the liquor licenses. Yes, thank you. <laughs> so and so sure. the only thing Pat mentioned, I don't know if you can see her post-it note. She yep. would like the board to authorize her to use the signature stamp on those. Oh, okay. Yeah, that'll be a blanket motion uh, to use the rubber stamp on these. Is that okay? Okay, yeah, great. That's fine. So um, I'll make a motion to approve the common, is it victual? Victual. Victual. Um, license uh, renewals, um, and I'll, I'm going to read these 10, and then we'll approve, and then we'll go to the other, like we did before. Okay. So Berkshire Brewing Company, Deerfield Inn, Food for Strength, slash Leo's Table, 
Giovanni's Fig, uh, Giovanni Fig's Restaurant, LLC, uh, Hotel Warren, Magic Wings, Inc., PHB Yankee LLC Powder Hollow Brewery, The Walk, three, I guess it's called, uh, Treehouse Brewing Company, and Wolfie's Restaurant. I make a motion to approve these. Tim Hill second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. We have the class, um, class two dealers, um, car dealer licenses, uh, renewals. We have uh, Richard, Richard Bado, uh, Badoga Richards Automotive at 242 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Greg Gardner, GMG Enterprises, 239A Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Kevin uh, Borbu, Borbo, maybe, uh, K Dog Auto Sales, 941 River Road, Deerfield, Mass. Gary and Scott uh, Kolakowski, Deerfield Motors and Equipment, 373 Greenfield Road, Deerfield, Mass. Joseph Caustic Jr., uh, Country Roads, uh, 18 Upper Road, Deerfield, Mass, 01342. I just had a, one question about um, K Dog. Yeah. Um, was that was permitted state. for uh, a location over near like, the line at Greenfield on River Road? Is yes, that, that, I believe so. Yeah. It was just because he, he, he turned moved onto it. River Road. Just yeah, he moved okay. it there. Yep. 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 And um, so okay. I made a motion to approve these as read. All right. In a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. We have a class three dealer's license. James uh, Byrne Jr., East Deerfield um, Auto Wrecking, uh, 769 River Road, Deerfield. I'll make a motion to approve that. I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And then we have funeral directors, um, Harold Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, 90A Sugarloaf Street, South Deerfield, Mass., and Lawrence Risley, Risley's Funeral Home, 90A Sugarloaf Street, South Deerfield, Mass. I will make a motion to approve um, the funeral directors. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. We have a home business renewal. Um, uh, we have Lisa uh, uh, Berger. Deerfield Healing Arts is 194 North Main Street, South Deerfield. Richard Floyd slash uh, by the book, 63 Grave Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Peter R. James, Peter R. James Consulting and uh, Catherine J. James Consulting, 40 Captain Lathrop Drive, South Deerfield. Ellen, uh, Elaine Mont, Deerfield Therapeutic Massage, 31 Lee Road, South Deerfield, Mass. And Robin LaFleur, Salon 68, 68. Lee Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, make a motion to approve the home businesses. And I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. We have an entertainment license. Uh, Betsy Shea, the Hotel Warren, 13 Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Robert uh, Pat uh, Patrizzi, the Tavern uh, Sports Bar, LLC, 2C Elm Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Plus one jukebox and two tables so i guess that's included in that entertainment license um damien lee uh, goudreau uh which is treehouse brewing company one community place south deerfield mass uh ben ware the yankee candle company inc 25 greenfield road south deerfield mass i make a motion to approve these entertainment licenses and i'll second it any further discussion all those in favor tim hilchey aye trevor mcdaniel aye carolyn ness aye Thank you. The annual resident auctioneer, uh, Douglas Billadu, Douglas Auctioneers, LLC, 241 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, I will make a motion to approve um, Douglas Auctioneers. All right. Any further I'll discussion? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you. An annual non resident auctioneer, um, uh, Michael uh, Budrowitz. Junior, Catamount Auction Company, LLC, 42 Church Street, South uh, Shelburne Falls, Mass. And Paul Muller-Reed, New England Auctioneer, 220 Greenfield Road, South Deerfield, Mass. Um, 
come that's not a yeah, how come that's not a that's a not maybe he just doesn't do th stuff in town, but he oh, is could be it's the same. They um, live in another town, but they do hold auctions here. They hold auction oh, oh, here. Oh, Got oh, it. Okay. okay. I understand. Yeah. Um, Sounds fine. Okay, so I make a motion to approve this. I'm I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hill GI. Trevor McDaniel I. Carolyn S. I. I, I guess I under misunderstood the resident. Yeah, non resident. Yeah, non -resident. yeah it's okay. resident versus non resident. Um, oh, he's got they both use spaces that they hold auctions. Great, thank you. So thank much. you. I want to thank Pat and Chris too because they really pulled all that stuff together without a lot of time, um, yep. in the midst of a lot of other work. We also have, um, we also have the uh signing of the sewer commitment. Let me just see this. So, um and these are all of the abatements. So I'll do the sewer commitment first and we get to the abatement. Um, and then this is the oh, age friendly. So uh, treasurer collector, this is uh, 12, 13, 2022 utility billing, 2023 commitment one, you are hereby authorized to collect from the 965 bills named on the commitment with the amount set against their respective names amounting in the aggregate of $953,393.56 um, to uh, pay over all monies as soon as collected to the town treasurer and to make a report of such payment to the town accountant. So uh, commitment number one, again, um, 96500 is the service. Uh, the sewer is 856 thousand eight hundred and ninety three and fifty six cents for a total of nine thousand nine hundred and fifty three thousand three hundred and ninety three dollars and fifty six cents i the, make a motion to approve the commitment okay and the sewer consumption was forty five million uh two hundred and fifty two thousand nine hundred and seventy nine gallons do we have a chart comparing that from year to year uh, I don't, but I bet you I have it in my books. I could grab just, some no, for you. And I know she has stuff. Yeah, I was yep. just curious. Yep. Um, I didn't know if people were trying to save water and so our commitment. Yeah, we can our gallons find water, that out. Whatever. I mean, it, it would just be interesting to know what yep. the trend is. Yep. We'll definitely look at that for sure. So um, there's a motion and do we need a second? We do need a second. Okay, I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn, that's I. And then uh, let's see. So this is a list of all the abatements because this was the summer bill and every resident gets a um, an abatement. They use anything above 125% of their previous winter usage um, gets abated this bill. So the total uh, abatement um, is $109,736.82. I had a sure. question before we make a motion. Yep, on this. that's fine. Um, gonna... Of course you can. This and, uh, I just wanted to understand. Yep. Sorry, I'm not speaking into the mic. Um, the amounts of abatements are drastically different. And I'm just wondering if there's some logical explanation. So like um, at the at the low end, we have um, a request for a home on Sugarloaf Street that's abating $26.84. Yeah. And then on the high end, we have um, Crestview um, that's for $7,337. Mostly it's irrigation. So we don't. Uh, so it's farming. It, it is farming or irrigation. Yes, exactly. Because, um, or, or watering lawns. Mm -hmm. Because generally um, we, we and we know people are going to water the lawn and we know people are going to water their garden. So a lot of, on the low end, it's usually watering the garden, filling the pool, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, is over and above their winter usage, but when it gets to the irrigation, you know, we that's why we abate that amount. They still it's watering the lawn. Yes, yeah, it's typically it's typically all irrigation. Mm -hmm. So we don't allow people separate meters to allow you know right irrigation. We just so abate everybody. 
somebody's either a farmer or they water their lawn a lot. That's correct. Yep, and they water their lawn a lot. And then they pay a lot of money for the water. Yes, they do. Okay. Yep. Sure. Casey has her hand up. Yeah, go ahead, Casey. I was just going to see if, if, if you mind if Kevin has anything to say about that. Oh, if he has anything to say, he's more than welcome to hear from him. Kevin, we, we're always glad to hear from you. Are you Kevin. watering your lawn, Kevin? Are you one of the... No, 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 no watering lawn in my house. Um, you know, when, when you think about it, you know, we're looking at the commitment and then you're looking at what your rebates are having to be because of the abatements. Um, but it's still 125% of what their bill is. So it, it's it's still 25% more than what their bill would be. You know, I'm, you know, I'm, am I going the wrong direction with this? Are you following? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> you're, you're, you're still, I don't want to use the word, you're still making money, but you're still making money. You're not returning all of the money. Right. Yeah. If that, if that makes sense, you're only, you're only, you're only charging them 125%. Yeah. 25%. You know, and, and, and anything above and beyond, or, you know, yeah. Anything well, below that, you're you're making money on per se. Still having to pay the water. Most bill. of the water is not going down the pipes. That's correct. Right. That's right. Correct. Yeah, and and that's and that's the whole thought process is is it's not going down the pipes. It's going back right back into the ground. You know, it's recharging. Um, and and we're not having to treat it, and and it's not a cost to the town, whether it be a flow issue or or a contamination issue. So it's mm -hmm. it's it doesn't affect us. Yeah, good. That was just a good opportunity to educate myself. On yeah, for sure. And people listening. How somebody could spend 26 and another one spend, you know, 7,000 yep. something. Oh, yeah. So thank you. Yep, for sure. So uh, December 14, 2022, the select board uh, hereby authorized the abatement of the above sewer accounts for single family owner occupied properties above 125% of their own winter consumption for the FY23 commitment one totaling $109,736.78. So entertain a motion to approve. I will make a motion to approve the abatement. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor. Yeah. Can I make a plug for staff in here? They did an amazing job. They Sarah, did. Pat, everybody trying to make sure you got this so we could get it out. Trying to trying to get on vacation too in the middle of tax bills coming in, sewer oh, bills yeah. coming in, stuffing envelopes. Thank you for everybody's help. It's always mayhem this time of the year and sometimes crazier than others. Oh. Um and we'll all address the um I, I don't think that matters. I don't think it matters. Okay. That's fine. Let's, let's, let's done a backwards thing. This one's right. Oh yeah. Nest okay. shores. Nest shores. Yeah, I don't, sounds like I, a nice place, Nest Shores. <laughs> I'd like to visit. I like the house there. You can always correct it, Carolyn. <laughs> just do a <laughs> no, straight I, through. I just didn't. As long as they know that. No, it's legal. that's fine. It's fine, I'm fine. sure. And then I'll look at the uh, frontiers and um, I think pilots and other and then any you know farmers. We all, we had a, that policy last year. We put together for farmers and stuff. So. Are you going to look at pilot too? Charlie? Yes, I am. I'm going to do that. I just hadn't had a chance to get in and look at their numbers yet since they came. Okay, thank you. Town hall also. What's that? Town hall also. Oh, yes, town hall also. Yep. Um, is there, um, let's see, do you, do you want to sign the uh, MOU for the program we just saw? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay. I feel pretty good about it too. Is there just one place for you? I guess there's just one. Good. Yep. I, I make a motion to authorize the chair to sign. Okay. I'll second. All those in favor? Tim Hill, she aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I mean, there's no sense in delaying it. What is no, it? I, mean, I think it's a great decision. program. Um, well, Sunderland and lately I, are in the pool. Yeah. So it makes total sense for us to work together. All over this. I, I know that she'll be excited to work with them on that. Yeah. So those are signs. And I was thinking that. Um, Carolyn can participate as a select board member, a board of health member, a senior citizen. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that last one. Ooh, I was, I was trying to be a low profile on this. Trevor and I could dodge that bullet. I, yeah, we can for a little longer. I have, I have, um, I, I am interested in the fact that you know, the definition for. Um, you know, the vulnerable population or injustice and equity and all that kind of stuff 
is pretty narrow. Yeah. You know, it's a lot race based, which I, I'm not arguing against. No. But I feel like, you know, in Franklin County, which majority is white, yeah. there are still huge exactly. inequities. Absolutely. Like transportation, we root them out. internet, yep. like, you know, competency and of, mm -hmm. you know, access to the computers and healthcare, mm -hmm. the whole thing. It's true. Yeah. So, I mean, I think our definition is too narrow. So I kind yeah. of am willing to argue that. Yep. Uh, I have a great memorandum from Casey Warren, town administrator, for recommendation for hire assistant town clerk. Oh, you know what? Can we just, you skipped the Tilton Library ownership thing? Oh, oh can I do this again. first? Uh, well, yeah. I, I just, I just want us to. <laughs> yeah, say, you know, I will just, forget it. All right. Go I, ahead. I just want, I just want us to, to, um, I don't know, have Casey encourage the Tilton Library to look at, to address the ownership. Yes, we do. And, and we, we've had that letter from the attorney years ago. I think Wendy went out and got that letter and information. I know. And, and, they just, and I know they've been asking us to get involved with it, but we really laid out the steps of what yeah, they need to they, do. And it's and their they, lawyer that needs need to, to start fix, the process. Correct. This, Am right. I right about yes, that? Yes, you're right. And we've talked to, I've talked to Lisa four times. And okay. um, I think it, one of the things that the trustees need to do is they need to instruct their lawyer to get in touch with Lisa. Right. I think, yes, that, I think that's the best case because us not right, but I answering just, it about doesn't really help. I, I think it really is their lawyer just, and I'm, we're willing to offer Lisa to talk this through and I'm well, sure the lawyer has. Sure, a Charlene Polinsky had a point that it needs to be squared away. Yeah. And then um, and Lily, Lily at our senior housing meeting mentioned that my husband's name is on the deed. For what? from a trust the, at the library oh he's one of the he's yeah the was deed. a deed at the time yeah and i'm not so because sure like it's, it's none of that really did. matters right no it doesn't but what i guess if we want to take it over it's one thing but it really isn't i mean the issue everybody tried to make well it. ray Bourne is dead i mean you know yeah apparently what they were doing is every once in a while whoever was a trustee ended up being on the deed right and then for some reason they stopped updating it so it's Stagnant. Old, it's stagnant old trustees and they need to organize their trustees off the board or whatever mm -hmm. different from their friends and i i i totally respect the opinion um i'm, I'm not a lawyer and mm -hmm. i'm sure that the trust ownership it's clear in the language that this was a gift to the town right so the town when you get a gift somebody else doesn't own it mm -hmm. um, and the trustees are there to administer the library for the benefit of the town yeah it's been gifted to it but if there were a way to do in something the in the trust or alter the trust or let the trustees you know sell the library to the town that we already own for a dollar just to right. stop this discussion from ever happening yeah that's and, fine but that's if, fine. if lisa says it's not legally possible to do this then so be it yeah yeah uh, at least we but, have an answer and yeah okay but i do I'm, agree that um, the library trustees lawyer should work directly with Lisa just to do all the steps and that Lisa should work with them or designate yeah. somebody in her firm to work with them so that they can agree together that all these steps have taken place. So, you know, and now that we're all cooperating together again. Uh, and their um, and their number of trustees and right. when they're appointed all needs to get sorted out too. So there's a lot of work to this. That and there may be questions for... about the trust too. I haven't read the opinion in a while. Okay. So no I will let Lisa know that this conversation happened. That's good. All right. Thank, thank you. you. All right. I'm I'm gonna, no, around. it's fine. I'm going to get to Just... the good news. Subsequent to advertising, a staff a team, including me, the town accountant, assistant treasurer, collector, and assistant town administrator, received and reviewed several candidate applications for position of assistant town clerk. This is an exempt full-time benefited position working in the treasurer, collector, and town clerk departments. After interviewing five individuals on behalf of the group, we present Casey, is it Cassie? Cassie. Cassie, Cassie Sandrell um, as the successful finalist for the assistant town clerk position. Cassie Sandrell brings key experience and skills from public and private sector employment. Cassie 
currently works in Northampton Senior in the Northampton Senior Center and Craig's Doors, both of which uh, serve a diverse population, presenting unique opportunities to support senior service and shelter service delivery, significant communication skills, troubleshooting, sensitive situations, and experience navigating staff shortages make her an excellent candidate to meet our needs. It is our recommendation that the select board vote to hire um, Cassie Sanderell as assistant town clerk and authorize the town administrator to finalize the hiring process. Thank you very much for your consideration. I will make that motion. And I'll second. Any further discussion? Just thrilled that we finally have somebody. Yep. Thank you for your work. I really appreciate everybody's work on and, this. And it was a good, good team effort. And will she, if she's in, the, will she, is she in the, ex, the chart of scales? I mean, yes. I, yeah, so the position, I'm sorry, I made one mistake in the memo. It's actually a non-exempt position. Oh, I, the sorry. last one I used, um, I, I sort of recribbed uh -huh. another memo. So I'm sorry for that mistake, but yes, Tim, the that assistant is. town clerk is in the class comp plan. Okay. okay. And then, and she's coming in at a, at, at which level? I mean, is she, I is would, that? so we discussed this. Um, You're gonna our suggestion as a group is to bring her in at step two. Okay. Because she does have municipal experience. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Can you let us know what happens there. I Next. will. Do you want to add anything, Chris? Chris did a lot of work with me on Thank this, you, and the team itself was very active. Thank you. Um, yeah, all I want to add is that we're really excited about the prospect of this candidate. She really impressed us during the interview process, and um, I think you'll enjoy working with her as well. That's great. That's Excellent. really great. We're getting good people. <laughs> Thank you so much. Exciting. Okay, did we do an all all those in favor? I think we did. Um, but do, what it again. do it again. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, I. <laughs> Trevor McDaniel, I. Yes, I. Great. I don't know what I'm doing either, but let's do it twice because we're going to have memory. Yeah, we're talking right. about it. I'm just making uh -huh. sure we're not skipping anything. Oh, my God. Let's see. All right. So our next upcoming meetings are just, uh, we said December 28th, but we were going to kind of skip that, right? Unless there was something. Yes, serious. unless there was something critical, you canceled it. And I didn't catch it. I've That's been fine. in and out because I've been sick. It's um, there in case. But so, it's yeah. Fine. It's yeah. fine in case we need it. It's yeah. fine. But, but otherwise, uh, we're not going to. Yeah. And um, town administrator support or updates, do you want to hit on anything? I know. Yes, I have five things. I'll be quick. Okay. Um, I'm, we've been, Kevin, myself, Chris Nolan, we've been working with Rivermore on the EV chargers at the Larry lot. Okay. Um, I'm going to give you guys some information about potential costs the town is going to face. Uh, but we actually have a meeting to go over the application process, Chris and I, tomorrow. Um, Kevin, you're welcome to come if you want to. Um, it's really the two things we're looking at are an approximate cost to the town of about $28,000 for the Leary lot and $25,000 for the town hall. Um, so we're going to go over that tomorrow. Landfill solar. So next amp is concerned about being able to proceed I, using. I the just um, hang on. Hey, I I went to that electric charging station webinar last week. And um, if you're a mile within an interstate, it's supposed to be free. We're outside of a mile. We're outside of a mile, yeah. It's it's a travel. Have... It's it's a traveled mile, not oh. a as the bird flies. We are just outside by like oh, two is... tenths of a mile. Oh my god! Yep. Can we move? Can we move the center of town? Sure. So yeah, that would be kind of interesting because we could maybe bury the lines. <laughs> I thought we were fine. I was mm. feeling sad for Which, all the hill towns and everybody else, and now we're. So we got no, our... but well, yes and no. I mean, basically, we're trying to. I mean, we're still close enough that, I mean, we we may not be able to get all the funding that we could have for it. But one of the advantages that we're looking at is is going with the stage three, charging systems. So that way we can bring in people off of 91 for a quick charge. They can go into Leo's table. They can go to Cheslick's. They can they can go get their hair cut. You know they can go to Johnny just, just 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 try to bring somebody into town to try and increase what we have a little bit. And that and that's a thought process. And you know out of a lot of the things that I think that we that we class collectively as a town we we put money towards. I I think you know it. 
I'm not an electric vehicle kind of guy, but I'm looking at the future and, and this it's, it's going to be needed in the future. Yes. Um, and if we have the opportunity to go ahead and, and get the infrastructure for it, I think we should move forward with it. Okay. Um, you know, that's, that's again, my own personal opinion. Internet is, is 91. The only thing that qualifies is within right the now. It, right now it is Tim. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Five and 10 is not considered enough of a traffic flow to no. uh, that's my understanding. Um, but yeah. you know, there's there's nothing saying that we can't we can't twist on DOT or whoever's the one that's setting setting the regulations on this. I mean, I mean to be so close. Well, it's federal right know. now, Kevin. The reason well, then why, um talk to your federal friends. We'll get it through. Well, I mean, we could get a waiver if you're talking of a tenth of a mile or something. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's, why not? Why not? I, I mean, I'm burnt. I mean, I was feeling sad for other towns. Fifty grand is not a huge well, deal. I mean, we can ask the question. The most they can do is say no. A long term, it's not, but it's still we got to come up with fifty grand. Yeah, and that was supposed to be free. And for a tenth of a mile, I well, think we. It should... was two tenths, right, Kevin? Two tenths. Yeah, about it's, it's about two tenths of a mile. Anyone? You know, I, I I have not physically driven it, but we we GPSed it. You know, and, and did the cursors going across, and we were about two tenths. So there's not much that's would. I mean, once you get off a highway, that I mean, I don't know, I guess right. lots to park and ride that kind of thing. But still, if you want to get business downtown, like, where else what you which is what we'd like to do. We'd like to support our support our local business. And then yeah, we can open up Conway on. Street again. Uh, <laughs> sorry. All right, moving on. Next amp. I can't believe that. Um. Yeah, Nexamp is concerned about being able to utilize the deed that's in place for the landfill. Um, okay. And I actually, I, I kept trying to get them to explain it to me. And finally, I said something to Beth and Beth Greenblatt and Lisa. And Lisa um, is going to confer with Nexamp's counsel because okay. there's legalese involved, but it shouldn't be an issue. Right. Um, the South Deerfield Congregational Church. Um, I've been working, we received specs for materials removal, but we also, uh, or materials abatement, but we also, uh, Julie put together a draft scope for the analysis of the building. So we are, she and I and some other staff are working on finalizing a request for quotes. And we think that should be able to go out in the next few days with a due date of January 19th and a walkthrough date of January 5th. Okay. Then the budget schedule, Julie, Brenda, and I have been working on a budget schedule. Um, it's difficult to get everybody at meetings, so it's not finalized, and it probably is going to need a little more discussion, but we'll keep you posted. Um, and also, Brenda's working on the budget sheets, so we can get them out next week. Um, the due date on budget sheets, just so you want to know, Kevin, I think I told you this, but the due date on budget sheets is going to be the week of the 23rd, I think, of January. Yeah. Um, the other day on that too. Yeah, because part of it is the governor's budget isn't coming out until right. March. I know. And so it's kind of be it's going to be difficult with the schools. So both Brenda and Julie are concerned about that. Um, we are still pursuing several grants. Alice and Denise had a debrief session with Community One Stop to discuss the application and why it wasn't approved. Um, a new letter of interest is open. I haven't had a conversation with them because I wasn't able to go to that meeting on Monday. Um, but I do believe we're going to have circle back around to that. And then there are, I applied for two community compact grants, one for our personnel policy manual development and one to assess current and future staffing needs with the added elements of diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we can position the town to be an employer of choice. I have not heard back, um, but I did, I had run this by staff at ANF earlier in the year as we were trying to get some sort of scope for both of those together. Okay. Thank you. That was a lightning round. Love it. Trying. Appreciate I'm it. I'm fading right. fast. I apologize for, I didn't realize my mic wasn't muted earlier. <laughs> I am fading fast tonight. <laughs> I didn't notice. Okay. Anything else before the board? No. Uh, well, just one. I want to oh. revisit something, and please, I, I I want to acknowledge that I I agree with Julie that having an alternate plan would give us something to look at, and so I 
I don't know that this is a good idea and I'd like lease it away in, but if if the nonprofits were, if we could do it and the nonprofits were willing to pay for it, we could approach a, a totally different engineering firm and ask them to design, it, uh, to come up with an alternate design, but they would be working for us. Mm. I mean, if if it's really true that, you know, an engineering firm can come up with a hugely less expensive way to do this that you know maintains the current conditions. I'm fine with looking at it, but just a thought. I don't. I don't want to make a decision. No, no. Okay. No, but this, like, this would be like a peer review. Just it's no different than anything else that we don't have expertise on that we would right. just get yeah. a peer review. Yeah, I mean that could be a that could be an alternative that yeah you know would be valuable. I'd really love just a conversation to say why can't you guys get in a room now? Yeah. Yeah, well, it, they want it does, happen. you know, but anyway. All right, thank you. Um, we, we should figure out, you know, what we want to do in the yeah. next two weeks or so. Okay. It, um, at least. Anyway, that's it. All right. Well, thank Thanks. you all. It's not an easy meeting, I know, but um, we try to listen to everybody and do the right thing. And it's not a, I know it's not no somebody is no not always pleased, but I think we try to be fair and we'll yeah. keep an open mind to anything in the future. So yeah. um, any further discussion? I will make a motion to adjourn. I'll second. All right. Um all those in favor. Tim L G I. Trevor McDaniel I. Carolyn Ness I. Happy so holidays, everyone. Yeah, Please happy holidays. Be safe. get your tickets. <laughs> <laughs>